Vikings and gentlemen, are you ready? Hit a one in the chat. Let the games begin. Lycans and gentlemen, we thank you for waiting. And now let the games begin. Let's see what you're doing. Ethan Winters. 
Get ready. No! Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Dude, I'm always muted. I'm always muted. One day I'll get it right, hey? <laughs> Guys, Dan here as always today with another interview. Carl Heisenberg himself, Neil Newborn. Thank you for joining me. Where are you joining me from around the world? We are about to get started with Neil. He's just been over on uh, Twitch streaming. And he's going to come over and join us now for a one-on-one -on -one interview. And we're going to talk all things Resident Evil, gaming, performance capture. We'll get some of your questions in. If you do have a question, guys, leave it in the chat. I'll try to get to as many as possible. If you have a super chat, I will get to those. If you want to confirm me getting your question out, a super chat is the way to go. You can also become a member of the channel, guys. Turkey, Germany, Argentina, Denmark, Italy, Germany... Romania. Beautiful. Love it, guys. I, I tell you what, Carl, Carl Heisenberg was a really great character for me. I loved him in the game. Loved the voice. Loved, loved the... Um, just the personality of him. Thought it was amazing. Jeez, J Japan, Mexico, Russia, Texas, Sweden... So we've got we've got somewhere for everyone except no no Australians in here because it's too early. It's only eight AM here, down under. Leebird, thank you so much for the super chat. Leebird Pro, Leebird Pro, Leebird Bro. What's your favorite character in Resident Evil Eight? Now, I made a video, a couple of videos yesterday. I hope you saw them, guys. The first one was the face models and characters of Resident Evil 8. Now, did anyone recognize the face model for, <laughs> for Moreau? Did anyone recognize that guy? He, he was quite a good looking guy. Obviously, it was a joke. I put myself in there. Um, but after doing that, I... Uh, I felt sorry for the guy after doing the law video, and I don't know. I, I wouldn't say he's my favorite. Who's my favorite? I, look, it's hard to go past Lady D, isn't it? I hate to I hate to be the the easy easy way out. Um. Yeah, I yeah, I like Heisenberg as well. You know what? Favorite character might be the Duke. Might be the Duke. What was yours, guys? Your favorite character in the game? Yeah, Kemp's. Yeah, he's from Detroit as well. Neil was in Detroit. He was also... He did the mocap for Nemesis, guys. If you didn't know that. Neil also did the mocap for Nemesis. He was also Nikolai. <laughs> they just keep bringing him back. Big Mummy. <laughs> mummy, of course. Why is her name Mummy? Oh, man. Vampire mummy. Heisenberg or Demetrescu, yeah. They were the standouts, yeah. The Duke was good as well, yeah, 100%. Donna, very... Hey. Well, that whole section, one of the best, just a little bit short. Tell you what, though, the baby, Donna, Angie, great stuff in there. Great stuff. Lee Bird, thank you so much again, man, for the five. 
Uh, mine was the Duke. Yeah. Oh, man. The Duke was awesome. We had him on the other day. Aaron. Pleasure to chat with him. And the Duke is a great character. I'm going to do a video on the Duke and his backstory and and that sort of thing. That's, that's going to come out in the next few days as well. All right, guys. We've got Neil here, as you can see, above my head. He's waiting. We're not going to let him wait any longer. We're going to get straight into it. I hope you enjoy it again. I will be answering questions um, once we once we get settled in and, and chatting with Neil. I, I try to answer questions and also pay him the respect and actually focus on him as well. It's a bit of a tough task because it's a one-man show. But guys, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it, eh? I will chat with you after. Here we go, guys. Enjoy. Neil, can you hear me, brother? I can hear you, man. Hey. Still, man. Nice to meet you, man. How's it going? Nice to meet you. We are live, by the way, brother. <laughs> Straight fucking in it. Right? Straight fucking into it, brother. We don't <laughs> muck around around here. <laughs> you don't fuck around. No. no, no, no. Okay, we're going to be like a couple of minutes. I'm going to be chilling out. And do you, You've got a cup of water or anything? Like that? No, straight fucking in there. All right, I love it. <laughs> oh, man. I, 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 it's really great to meet you, brother. How have you been? You too as well, man. I've, yeah, I've been great, actually. Um, I'm very blessed. Uh, I've got vaccination and... My pandemic has been, I mean, we've all had like people that have had it and, you know, lost and stuff like that. But I, I got to say, I'm, I'm pretty grateful for my life. I mean, I've had a good, a good run of things compared to a lot of people in the world, especially now. A lot of people are still suffering incredibly so. So I feel incredibly blessed and, and lucky to be in a good place. And my you know, close friends and family are all safe and well. And yeah, it's, I'm, I'm okay. You're yeah, based out of... How are you doing? Um, I, we're going good. We've been out of... Um sort of lockdown and that for a while now in australia we've got a handle on it but again not as many people yeah. down here to worry about are you are you based in la um so i have a few bases i'm based in la and also london yeah. so i actually i actually was in tokyo i it's been a while for years to be honest with me i'm very lucky um i was doing like four or five different projects simultaneously pretty much including like consulting on a few projects as well because I'm, I'm a performer, director and consultant. And I was going from LA to Tokyo to LA to Hungary to Japan again. And it was wild. I, I literally landed wow. back in the UK uh, two days before the UK lockdown. And, uh, and actually I have work here anyway. So funny enough, I haven't been back to LA since, but I'm looking to go, hopefully at the end of the year I'll be back in LA. But it's so you're trip. always on a plane before the pandemic. Yeah. To be honest, I'm I'm peripatetic, man. I'm a nomad. So <laughs> oh, really? I like it. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I like being able to see a lot of the world. It's important. I think for all human beings, if we're lucky enough to be able to have the ability to travel, to meet other people, to meet the others that are out there in the world, to not just get too closed into our own environment and think that that is what life is because it's mm. not. So I'm very blessed that I've, I've always had itchy feet. My mother used to say I had itchy feet. I was always moving um that I adhd that. i was undiagnosed one of the two i don't know <laughs> my mom didn't do a lot of it, diagnosis stuff so one of the two so um the, yeah so I've you're well a you're well traveled that means you've been to australia yeah, yeah? i have been to australia oh, bang. Yeah, yeah. There you go. i have been to australia awesome yeah, yeah i was i was in sydney i was in uh i was in a tiny little town called dollar in the middle oh, of uh, yeah. <laughs> in the middle okay. of the outback why were you there where, <laughs> Why was I don't know, man. I, just, I, I, like, I like moving around. You, know? you really are. So a I was there. I got yeah. I got this dollars in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it's nice, nice people. Um, yeah. The main when I was there, this is going back some time. When I was there, the main attraction was the drive-through McDonald's. Like that was like the thing <laughs> of the town. And I went swimming in a, like a freshwater uh, reservoir. Yeah. And I, all the people I was with, the Australians, um, I got to know about the Australian wave thing. Oh, like, yeah, I just yeah. used to eat under blankets. That was like how I ate. It was just like <laughs> I would not eat outdoors. Um, and so I went swimming one day. <laughs> so I was halfway, literally halfway across this enormous fucking reservoir. And somebody just shouts on the shoreline. I can't remember who it was now. He goes, uh, oh, shit, it's a croc. <laughs> I was like, excuse me? It's like, what? A crocodile? They did not. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? They did about? not, really? Yeah, they did. I, fuck, I swear. You're not I'm, making I mean, this up. No, I'm not making it up. They screamed crop. Oh I just freaked out. 
because I'm fucking British, what do I know? <laughs> and just went straight for the shoreline. And even though they were laughing, I just thought they have got a morbid sick sense of humor. They're just laughing at me about to be eaten. Like that's funny <laughs> to them. Uh, until I realized it was a gag and there's no crocs in the water. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like Australia a lot though. I was in Sydney, Melbourne, uh, and Dollar. <laughs> I think I you're the only guest I've ever had that's been there. Get the fuck out, really? <laughs> Australia's cool. No, no, not Australia, but um <laughs> oh like dollar yeah yeah dollar's a whole other trip brother. yeah, yeah. <laughs> how was your how was your 2020 mate how did you go through that <clears throat> end year yeah so i started 2020 in india um i then went straight out to uh i was in la for a while finishing up uh, re village which is great we can talk about it now um and then i went straight to tokyo i was working on an animated film which is really cool uh, doing like consultation and action directing and things like that with working with the director and performing as well. And then that was the, it was the end of this crazy whirlwind few years where I just didn't stop. My feet barely touched the ground. And then I landed back in the UK and of course everything hit and everything was like strange and weird. And for me, it was unusual because I had to, I went from running all over the planet to suddenly stopping dead. Um, mm. Which was interesting, actually. I have to say that was, um, it wasn't bad. It was different. Um, obviously, the main thing was worrying about how everybody is going to be and how the world's going to be and all that stuff, like everybody on the planet, you know. Um, but weirdly, within a month or so, I had April off. And then May, because the work that I do, I specialize in now, um, we were back in the studio in isolation, but we were still working. I was working with uh, Rebellion on something I can't talk about. I was playing five different characters in one scene, for instance, which wow. you can do in performance <laughs> capture. You can do that. Oh, so, not many people um, could do that. Come on. <laughs> I don't know. I think there's a few. <laughs> so I can do that. So, yeah, so I specialize can. in multi role. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. But I specialize in multi role. And for us, it was like we can be safely in the volume. Like we're a good 20 meters away from the bank of technicians at some points. Uh, we can do stunts in isolation. We can oh, so, you can. Isolation. so you can go in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, we could. We were going there from May onwards. And also, I was on, I'm on Baldur's Gate 3, which is a real trip, playing a great character. And we were in the booth pretty much, I think June onwards, July, we were back in the booth. That's a long, that's a long game. I've been doing that for like a year and a half now, I think. Yeah. Um, so I've been working kind of, not the whole way through it, obviously, there was some months there was no work at all, like everybody. Uh, but I feel incredibly blessed and very grateful to everybody that gives me a gig. And the fact that I could do some kind of creative work really helped me, I think. Uh, but I feel a lot for the actors out there that were in theatre heavily or, mm. or on TV series or films that just suddenly shut down. And that must have been really hard for a lot of people, especially in theatre. Um, so we've always been trying to, I have a production company as well. We try to be very pro actor and try and champion people that haven't had much exposure, for instance, or try and get them into games because that's our big thing at the moment. So, yeah. so, so for the people that don't, what, what don't you do, mate? So you, you, you're an actor, <laughs> voice actor. Uh, I don't ice skate. Capture, I'm not a very good ice skater. I'm you're not terrified an ice of skater. ice skating. <laughs> no, terrified of it, man. It scares. Uh, okay, so <laughs> I'm an actor. I started off in theatre, film, and television. Uh, I got into games and performance capture and voice over about 11 years ago when nobody wants to do mocap and performance capture, uh, which is like basically wearing lycra. Basically, you're naked in lycra with big balls. Hold on. Right? Can I stop you there? Why did no one... Because yeah. that was the future. Why would no one want, want to do yeah. that? They just they just had short vision. I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to speculate of other people's points of view, but at the time, I had friends, uh, then agents, um, even like lovers and things like that, telling me, "Don't do it. It's going to ruin your career." Nobody. It's it's like a. It's not considered an art form, and games weren't considered, um, which is wrong, by the way. But games okay. weren't considered to be the same level as TV and film and all that kind of bullshit. But um, I'm a gamer anyway. I've been since I was like eight. And I, I know that the narrative structure and story in games was getting better and would get better and fidelity yep. of graphics were getting better. Therefore, therefore, performance must be more nuanced. And for me, when I first saw performance capture, which was uh, mocap, it was in an article um, with Audio Motion, Audio Motion in, in Oxford, who've done amazing stuff for like the last 25 years. They gave me my first gig. And they put me in touch with Ubisoft and I did Ghost Recon and Future Soldier. And the second I stepped into that volume, I saw it was theater and film. It just it instantly made sense to me. I instantly got it. I have a background in both those things ex extensively anyway. So the second I stepped into the volume, for me, it was like, I completely understand this new, it's a new craft, it's a new technique. Hmm. So the people I was working with, of which there aren't too many left still working as performers, a lot of them moving to other things or retired, a few are still around. 
Um, but we all talked about it. We all talked with uh, Brian Mitchell, who's the head of Audio Motion. We worked with Imaginarium, worked with Centroid 3D. We, we talked all amongst ourselves about this is the future of storytelling. It's interactive for the player. It uh, has branching mar narratives. Even then, there were different ways of ending a game, for instance, ending a story. Um, we saw that you, essentially you could play anybody. You weren't going to be typecasted in the same way that you were in TV and film. So that people that would never play the heroes, but had a great voice and good movement, could now play the heroes. And people like me, who always typecasted as very specific roles in TV and film, I was allowed to become a character actor, mm. which for me was just fucking wah, golden. I was given better roles in some respects because they were more varied away from what I looked like in games that I would never get in TV and film. So it's exactly me, what Troy Baker hooked. said when I had him on. Troy's cool. Troy and I have met. I have like you? Troy. Yeah. yeah, I would love to work with Troy. Oh, Apparently, I'm like his evil twin. <laughs> <laughs> you really would. Troy, thank you. Troy, somebody that we were with, we were having drinks in London, actually. And somebody commented that we're like, we're kind of, we're so similar in many ways. So I, I think I'd be the evil one, the evil twin. So it makes more sense. <laughs> Troy would be the hero. I'd be the, the evil twin. I think it's that way. <laughs> I'd work with him in a heartbeat, man. He's, he's amazing yeah. and, and, and inspirational as well. You know, he's a great actor. But you've spoken to him. Yeah, he's cool, right? He's a cool guy. He is cool. Um, Lee Bird Bro here says, Neil, do Nikolai <coughs> Eisenberg and Nemesis. Now, I'm not going to make you do them all, but we will talk yeah, about all awesome. three. <laughs> yeah. we can talk about we can do all three I, I i know that you can switch on the heisenberg voice like that i've seen you do it right right, right. okay and so, no, well uh, nikolai was fun as well i liked playing nikolai yeah it was a, that was a fun character all though. three man i mean how blessed yeah. just to stay in this franchise in in each game yeah, yeah. it was a it was a bit of a trip because i wasn't expecting to be called back in for duty again and yeah. so, I mean, Steve Knebley, who's an amazing actor's director and an amazing director and super talented, he and I have worked together like four or five times now. So we have like a little mini mocap family of actors that he knows the capabilities of and he loves working with and we love working with him. So although we still audition, we never, I don't ever get anything for free. It's always auditions, no. or, you know, meetings and that kind of stuff, right? As it should. You be. earn your place, yeah. So you earn your place, brother. Absolutely right. So with Steve, he's got such a good sense of what the actor's capability are that if you if he says, right, I want to put you up for this role, it's because he you know that he knows that you can do it. Mm. So all you've got to do is show your work. But to be called back in very soon after doing three, I was yeah, I was really delighted and surprised. And no, uh, I don't think anyone else would fit the role of Heisenberg. Maybe Nicolas Cage. Ah, bless him. <laughs> Shit, I, actually, I got called out on that. And actually, it's true. I actually stole a bit of Nick Cage for Heisenberg. Oh, I, I would say you stole it. No, I just, you know, a little, I squeeze a little of the... Nick Homage. Marrow. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, I don't know, man, I said this before in another interview, I don't know what it is about Nick Cage. I can't tell if he's like the best actor of his generation, like 30 years ahead of his time, <laughs> or he's he's just fucking mad. I, can't I think it's out. the second. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, either he's like amazing Oh, he's a crazy person. I just, it's one of the two, right? Oh, um, yeah, I yeah. referenced, I, I do tend to like to look at real world people for habits and I don't know, just I like playing around with different people, real people, and then just sort of like slotting them in. I looked at Cary Grant and Jimmy Stewart as well. And uh, yeah. I threw, threw a dash of all three of them together and birthed. Heisenberg. So did that voice come out straight away? <clears throat> no, that took, I, I was actually, I was working with Creative Assembly and I was um, in a, a really dingy, appropriately dingy hotel in, uh, <laughs> near the studio when I did the audition for those roles. And they gave me a chance to go up for Chris Redfield. I didn't know it was Chris Redfield. I was like, and I looked at it, it was like, that's Chris Redfield. There's no fucking way they're going to give me that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, yeah. and Heisenberg was like, a, was like a nice distraction from something I was really struggling to get. Because um, Jeff Shine, who's incredible, yeah, amazing, awesome. talented. He is the only person in my eyes that could play Chris Redfield. He's, he's so talented. So when I'm looking at that, it's like, I'm struggling with this one. So Heisenberg for me was like, well, I can just have fun with this character because I can, I know, definitely understand it really well. So Heisenberg was, all the only note I had for the voice was transatlantic. Um, transatlantic. And, hmm. Yeah, it basically means it's what the old, it's like Cary Grant. He's a British guy who was called Archie Leach, buggered off to Hollywood and then developed this kind of like American twang. 
Uh, so Heisenberg has a transatlantic accent, essentially. So he sort of talks like that. And that's why I referenced Jimmy Stewart a little bit. He's not transatlantic, but he has this sort of nice little stuttering thing. Cary Grant was definitely an inspiration. And then throwing Nick Cage in there somewhere, <laughs> melting, melting it like cheese, Nick Cage cheese, or whatever it's not, right? <laughs> so, you know, you end up with this kind of Heisenberg thing, you know. Of, oh, I love it. Kill that boulder punching ass. <laughs> <laughs> right. So things like that. And then on top of that, I also, the fact that he was a machinist and a tinkerer, mm. I, I, I kind of drove in this sort of like gravelly, almost like cogs knocking against each other kind of quality that you see in the family moment when, um, you know, when yeah. he, <clears throat> it's really, it's hell on my throat, actually, so I shouldn't do it too much. But he says stuff like, uh, what was it? How's the line go? Um, um, Let's see what you're really made of, Ethan Winters. So he's just sort of drove yeah, those a different pitch, gravelly thing. Yeah. yeah, gravelly thing into a more smoother kind of almost louche, laissez-faire kind of like transatlantic Cary Grant, you know. Yeah. So I played around a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. XM Fox says your voice is perfect. <laughs> um, there's people here that are very big fans of Detroit Become Thank Human, you. which I will geek oh, out cool. with you about that later. Yeah, uh, man, that was a great game. Everyone loves yeah. this voice, man. It's uh, Thank you very and the much. performance. Thank you. Did you did you expect this sort of fan reception and people to like the character? Because he is supposed to be a villain. You know, he's not supposed to be like this. But you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean, man. I, here's the thing: I've I've made a great, wonderful, grateful career out of playing villains. But I don't see them as villains, man. I just see mm. them as people that are doing their thing. You know, I think it's that it, all actors like talk about this, right? You can't play villain. You can play a motivated human being with very little morals <laughs> but you can't really play a villain because you end up like you know twirling mustache and shit yeah. but um yeah I, I like playing the darker characters because they they're not bound or shackled by the rules that the hero is you know what i mean yeah like you can play anti-heroes obviously and like i'm playing a star in Baldur's Gate 3 that is definitely an anti-hero but um a lot of the people i play who are the antagonists a, you're not carrying the story, which is a great relief as an actor to not have to carry the story. And, you know, Todd and Todd Solly did an amazing job. You know, he's, he's a lovely guy to work with as well. I've got a lot of time for Todd. Um, so villains have that freedom. Uh, and also you get to really push the boundaries of what is OK. So, like, you can do what you ought not to do in a, in a character because you're never going to get away with that in real life. So I really enjoy that aspect of freedom of... You know, he can be, the Heisenberg can flip on a dime. He can offer up the proposal and then push you down the hole. And that makes total sense to the character. Whereas, you know, a, a hero character to do that, it would have to be something quite a stretch for him to just suddenly drop somebody that was no longer useful to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I kind of enjoyed that with the characters. And yeah, I really like playing villains because you get that kind of freedom you know most people would say that's their favorite scene i actually like the scene the one-on-one -on -one oh. with with todd with ethan that was mm. my favorite scene yeah yeah yeah. that what? was towards the end of the game right you yeah yeah towards, towards the end just yeah. when you're heading yeah. into the factory that scene yeah yeah there's some nice stuff in there man we, it was weird because we we shot it like over two sessions i think it was and then i had to do an adr session in la at formosa and then I had to do an ADR session during the pandemic in my home studio uh, in my place here in London. And wow. that was interesting because they'd actually padded out a lot more stuff for him to do because they, wow. they kind of dug what the direction we took him in. So the boulder punching arsehole was definitely a, a love letter to the fans. Oh, yeah, that was and, awesome. And that was, yeah, it was really, I didn't, because I didn't understand the reference. Oh, really? <laughs> I was like, a boulder pinching? What? What the fuck? Why is he, why is he pinching boulders? I don't mean fucking sense. So they told me about like it's RE five, I think, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was like it was like a nice. It, they literally said we just want to put it in because we we want the fans to know that we love them and we dig it and yeah, it's, you know. So they they had to say we'll say this and it's a reference that some people get, some people won't, but the people that will get it hopefully will really like it. So it's so probably it's not, the I best Easter like in the game actually. Oh yeah. really? Okay. Yeah, cool. no, yeah, it's awesome. Um, Heavy, heavy, oh, heavy. Thank we... you very much for asking me on. I really appreciate it. Thank Mate, you. thanks for coming on. I really yeah, appreciate pleasure. it. Uh, Heavenly King says Donna was sexy, man, and Heisen was easily my favorite character. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. The Macho. I wish I could say the hat was my idea, it wasn't. Oh, really? 
Oh, you wore you wore the hat in uh, mocap, didn't you? You had a little hat. Yeah, there. that was interesting. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I turned up day one, and Steve and Steve and I are actually like really close friends as well as like we work together, right? So he just comes up to me and goes, "You're wearing this," and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> like, okay. I'll go with it because you say so, but what the fuck, you know, it was great. It was very useful because what it allowed me to do was also play, because until that point, obviously I didn't, I didn't actually quite know what he was going to look like. But then when yeah. I realized I had this hat, it was like, cool, I can play with the brim of the hat. So I can do this thing, which is like, almost like I'm peeking like below it half the time. Almost like I can't quite look at everybody. Like, I don't want people to completely see me. Like, it, I don't it, know. It a a little bit of mystery, but also threat, the threat. Mm. So I don't have to, because, you know, if you don't see somebody's entire eyes or eyebrows, it's more intimidating. You can't really, yeah. It's intimidating. You can't read their in, in expressions. So mm. I played, I definitely played with that a lot, which was really nice because often you don't, you may know what your character is going to look like, but you don't always get the full costume. Uh, did to I, play around with, you know? did I hear somewhere that you, you method act? Yeah, I'm a trained method act. Yeah, this is true. Wow. Yeah. So, Talk to so me about I'm that. in America. Yeah, sure. Um, so, okay. So method acting, there's a certain kind of misnomer around method acting yep. that there are extreme versions of it. For instance, Daniel Day Lewis, I love, I mean, I dig it a lot, but he, he literally on Gangs in New York bought a pig, like a dead pig <laughs> and left it on set. And when he was doing Bill the Butcher stuff, he'd go up to it in the middle, you know, halfway through and start carving it because he learned how to fucking carve a pig. <laughs> which I'm totally down for. So I, I really like the idea of it because, because the bottom line is it helped him get into the character. Yeah. So um, I have a lot of relaxation tools and method. I have a lot of sense memory, some all this kind of stuff that I pull in tools that I use for characters that are from a method background. And yeah, sometimes I do sort of stay in um, an element of the character. I, I'm not, I don't go full character the whole time because that's, that's a lot. Uh, but I did Planet of the Apes, for instance, How I Met Steve Kniebel in the first place. And there, I would, you know, with the apes, we use sign language. So we started using sign language in between takes to take the piss out of people. Um, and we, <laughs> we developed Ape SL, man. It was like an 84 word strong. We have a dictionary. We you did on not. PDF. Yeah, we really. It. So oh for Last God. Frontier, the ape tribe, we sat down for a whole day, pretty much with Peter Elliott, Steve Knebley, the two writers. And we went through creating Ape SL. So that was kill which it doesn't exist obviously but we we made the there's like bullshit you know like that which actually is in american sign language i believe um so we created this and we used it and we used it to play with each other in between takes because i'm a great believer in that to stay in the the rhythm of the characters but my i used to use a relaxation tool which would drive people a bit nuts apparently which i have apologized for a lot so <laughs> i do like hoots and hollers so like <laughs> In before every fucking take you did just not, so really? I could, yeah because that's like that's like this is like when apes get excited they start doing displays and <laughs> do, do like people start, start laughing or are they respectful no <laughs> no they did not they went the other way with that actually they didn't see the humor of it but it helped right. me as an actor especially because people knew why i was doing it, it wasn't like yeah. I was just being thick, I don't know. but it helped me get into the act to drop into my ape who was called brin <clears throat> Uh, it just really solidified the experience. So we would play like, you know, we'd start reaching for things and we'd move the whole time like apes as far as possible yep. um, around the scenes to just get you into it. I stayed in American accent most of the time I'm in America anyway. Um, yep. Because you just want to, you know, feel the character a bit more. So that's, method acting is more than that. It's, it's also very quite misunderstood. Um, like any tool in acting, like lab and technique, Meisner, method, uh, classical, you know, stage acting, film technique, all of it is just tools to get you closer to the truth of the character's fictional reality. Like acting itself is, a tr is a, just a tool because when you're in it, you should feel completely immersed in the experience mm -hmm. with safety. Obviously there's a safety element to that as well. Uh, you, you know, if you've got a knife, you don't actually want to kill somebody. You just want to pretend to kill somebody or whatever. Mm. So, but it, it's all tools to help you relax and believe like a five-year-old, like playtime. Um, but yeah, I'm, I did hardcore method acting. I did, you know, Yap Malgram's work, Larbin, a whole bunch of different stuff just to help me expand my, my tool set, man. It's People are just saying, RIP my ears, headphone users. <laughs> Shit, I should have given a headphone warning. I, I'm, I've been told about that because I do have very good projections. Oh, that's sorry, so funny. Sorry, 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 sorry. No, there <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I find that so funny. Uh, the Macho uh, Echidna <laughs> says, Carl's magnetic powers... Were Carl's magnetic powers just an illusion like some of the others? Did he just run up and stab Ethan's arm while making it look like he flew in? <laughs> That's really elaborate. I'm pretty sure... I'm under the impression... <laughs> it's really elaborate. <laughs> look over there! Stab! Oh, I just moved it with my mind. Um, no, I think... I'm really sure that Heisenberg is supposed to have those powers. From what I remember, the discussions, he actually is doing this, I believe. I believe that's the, the point of view. They have a good um, I, I may be wrong because honestly, like, you know, Ari, people, fans of Resident Evil will probably know way more about all this stuff than I do. I just know what I was told yeah, and what yeah. I went with. So, you yeah. know, it's uh, all a beautiful dream. Ethan's fine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Ark, Ark Chiller says, Can you say bitch in Heisenberg's voice? Okay, last, <coughs> last one. No, sure. I don't mind. I can, I can do this mind? all day long. I, really, okay. I don't mind at all. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, what is the actual? There's a full. There's a, a full there's a line in the book. yeah. The, he it's likes. Lying. He it's said he like likes a... the emphasis on itch part of it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> very <laughs> very specific line, again. Uh, moronic freak, uh, lady something or other, bitch like that. Yeah, and he just throws <laughs> the dagger up. Mm. Queen. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called. That's it. Lady super sized bitch. Like that. He just throws yeah, it away, throws it doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throws the dagger away. Uh, Lee Bird, if, if Ethan actually accepted the deal for Heisenberg, what would have happened? It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think it would transition into a musical number where they'd be like <laughs> jumping through, like killing, shooting daggers. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I, would, I would dig, I would like to see that DLC. You know what I mean? Like, oh, if, we need like, a Heisenberg Heisen DLC. Heisen, the Heisenberg deal, that's fucking great. So yeah, I would love to see the Heisenberg deal where it's a different branching narrative and you're now with Heisenberg trying to do it. That'd be fucking great. Um, I don't know, is the honest answer. I didn't play that fictional reality, so... Yeah. I don't know, man. Bonnie. I like the idea that people make... Sorry to interrupt. Um, no, that no. people make fan, fan, um, uh, fan fiction about games they love. I think it's really cool. So if someone wants to write that, I'm, I'm totally down to read it, man. That sounds great. Do you get tagged in a lot of uh, Heisenberg stuff now? I'm guessing you do every day. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm very, I'm a bit overwhelmed actually in a good way about yeah. the response to the character. I think it's really, um, again, you know, I, I don't play, I don't play these characters to be recognized. Um, I don't, my fame is not like a thing that I'm really pushing towards. I just love playing in stories. So if somebody comes up to me and says, I fucking hated your character, he's a complete <laughs> asshole. And I'm supposed to be the villain. It's like, cool, job done. All right, thank you yeah, very much. Yeah. For that. Thank you. Not much of a dick. Hopefully not a dick, but thank you very much for my character being a dick. Like Detroit. Um, like Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But so, yeah. no, it's cool. <laughs> and, and also, like, in theatre, we, we get to always meet our audience and we could discuss with the audience, in fact, like what, what, they, what the fuck they just saw. Um, whereas in games, obviously, we're, it's very remote. It's very, you know, it's in people's homes and all that kind of stuff. So we don't ever really get to interact with people who enjoy the work. So I feel very lucky that social media is in such a way that I can talk about my work and people are interested, more importantly. I'm, I'm very flattered that people are interested and support my work. Um, and I feel quite honored, you know, I am often, um, obviously not anymore, but like in Comic-Con stuff, which I have been going to a few, it's very nice, generally nice to meet people and hear their experience of the story. Because- It's all um, different, is it I sometimes different, yeah. Yeah, sometimes different, but there's a sort of commonality, and I like the fact that people see in my character something that I didn't hadn't occurred to me. Yeah, um, right. maybe which is kind of cool. I um, I really like that a lot. So um, I think it's really flattering. I don't always feel deserved of it, to be perfectly honest. But then that's not the point. The point is that the audience enjoyed the character and enjoyed the story, um, or hated the character in the, in the right way. Then that's my job done, and that makes me feel like cool. I did a good job, and you know I, I entertained somebody. And um, yeah, that's that's a nice feeling. It's a bonus. Really. So do you get imposter syndrome sometimes? I think every actor on the planet has had imposter syndrome. I think the, yeah. the great thing for me finding performance capture and voice was finally being able to completely acknowledge the fact that I am a character actor, that I am legitimized okay. in saying that I'm a character actor. 
Yeah. That doesn't look like a character actor, a classic character. I don't know what the fuck that looks like either, but I couldn't get that kind of role in TV and film. Um, but I can get that in games. So for me, it was like, great, I can play anybody. Obviously, within my um, ethnic um, uh, background, something that's appropriate to my ethnic background, obviously. Um, I shouldn't play Amer African American, for instance. Mm. Um, but I can play any role within that that is appropriate to, to me. I think that's great. It's amazing. Yeah. And that's uh, something about nice about performance capture as well that uh, people from maybe underrepresented uh, backgrounds are now coming forward and being able to being you know being able to play in these environments, which is amazing to see that kind of diversity. It needs more, but it is great to see that, especially in games where you can make your character look like you look if you want to. You know, I think it's very cool. Like Maggie, she knocked it out of the park as Lady Demetrius. Maggie's and, amazing. You know, she, that's that's probably her biggest role to date, and she would say that as it well. Is. And she's yeah, it is. and and look at her now. She gained like fifteen thousand followers in a day, something like that. Yeah, yeah Maggie's something crazy. A, Maggie's, she's a she's a firecracker, man. She's great. Yeah. Uh, Maggie and I met on the set. Obviously, instantly like fell in love with her. I think she was brilliant. Yeah, uh, we became friends. Like we spoke, you know, around the shoots and stuff like that, and saw each other. And yeah, we had a conversation. Like, I think it was, I think it was when we discovered the maybe it was post discovering a video of somebody spanking her with a fly swat on oh, the ass or yeah, something like that in the game. I've seen a few, and of it those. got and it got five point four million. It's on ten views. now. It's on ten million. <laughs> 10 million now. views. <laughs> That's ludicrous, man. It is. That's it's crazy. ludicrous. All right. So <laughs> it was just before that happened. That, you know, we talked about it. I was like, this is going to just deservedly do wonders for you and, and establish you as a fantastic actor um, with a great role that she absolutely nailed. I mean, I remember being on set, what, I, not just in the scenes we were together, but also watching her scene by the, um, when she's by the vanity table and she throws the fucking table around. I remember watching that live because I was in, I was in the Sony studio with her, man. And oh, I was nice. watching it thinking, fuck, that was great. That was really pretty sure steve and i shared a look like yeah that was cool. she's got it yeah yeah seriously yeah she's got great acting chops man she's a great actor yeah bonnie love here says i love you so much and love the character and i gotta say oh, thank you very much if thank i you. read out everyone complimenting you in here i wouldn't get a question in <laughs> but don't it's not, but thank you very much for everybody saying I, I again it's like I, I i get very um i'm a little socially awkward sometimes um just because it's not imposter syndrome, it's it's humility. I hope um, because I kind of it's I being don't humble. know what to say. <laughs> to, I hope so because I don't really know what to say back. Sometimes, like thank you is the thing that I appreciate people's. Uh, I think the main thing is I think pe I hope people like the characters more than me. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Like I kind of I quite guarded about my private life. Really, I, I'm quite a public figure in work and streaming. I do now a little bit as well, and I have a production company and academy and stuff yep. to teach people performance capture. But my private life is quite guarded because nobody's really ever written stuff about Neil Newborn. They've written stuff about the characters that I play. So I think it's nice to push them to the foreground, and I think it's really nice when people cosplay those characters and make them their own. So I like it when people have pictures of them being that character. I think it's kind of cool. But I really appreciate people saying lovely things because it's well, very you, you know, very if you're ever having a down day, just come back to this video and watch the live <laughs> chat. Just watch, <laughs> watch the good. live chat replay and you'll be like, yep, <laughs> I'm all good Thank for you. today. Okay, uh, I feel I'm not, I'm not shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Murdoch here says, excellent work, Neil. Great voice. Thank you. Will we see you in a future Resident Evil? Well... He's been the last three. <laughs> Dude, I don't know, man. I mean, I, 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 even if I was in Resident Evils from now on, I couldn't be able to tell you, I'm afraid. I, I, I'm <laughs> very course. good about NDA. I yeah, I've heard of it. NDA. I have heard of it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I can definitely tell you that there's at least five projects I'm involved with, none of which have come out yet. Big games um, or what? And, yeah, <clears throat> games Ooh. and animated film. And also a vo potentially a voiceover thing. Well, you know that means I'm uh, getting you back on, don't you? Yeah, whenever you want, man. I'd love to. <laughs> it's really nice to meet you. I've, I've watched some of your stuff. I think it's really great. So, Thank you, man. I yeah, whenever it. you want, dude. Well, yeah, just ask. Um, I so, but I would love to be involved in the RE universe at some point again. That'd be great. Um, whether they'll let me back in is a whole other, <laughs> whole other thing, man. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Bubble Tea. Uh, hi, Neil. My sisters and I are a really big Hello. fan of yours. They're really Hello. crazy about Kamsky. Can you say hi to Cielo and Liani? 
and Luna. Jeez, I'm not good Cie- with names. Cielo, but... Cielo, Luna, and Liani. I think so. Yeah. I hope I haven't butchered it. No, no. So I'm just trying to remember the thing now. Uh, I always leave a back. What is it? I always leave. A... I always leave an action in my programs. You never know. Hello, Siani and Leah and Luna and all you other batshit crazy named people. Thank you for watching Dan Allen Gaming. Possibly the best gaming show on the planet. And just remember, if you're not drunk right now, it's not five o'clock. I don't know. <laughs> You've got I kind of ran out of Kamsky ass things to say. Yeah, I think yeah. Kamsky, Kamsky drinks whiskey. That's about it. I don't know. So it's been a little minute since I've done Kamsky. So sorry if I wasn't quite getting that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, what was your favorite character at Resident Evil 8 for Lee Bird? Besides Heisenberg, uh, obviously. In Resident Evil 8? 8, yeah, in Village. I'm a huge fan of Maggie's, man. I yeah. think Lady, it's, it's, just, it, it's just so good. And her, I really liked her, her take on it, the sort of classic, um, like almost like, um, what was the name? Uh, there's a woman that's just slipped my head. Uh, not Ava Gardner, but like one of those, like Lauren Bacall, like, like it's kind of like powerhouses. Proper you know powerhouse I mean? sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, like that kind of like old 1930s, elegance. 1940s, elegance and danger. Mm. And I just she just absolutely fucking nailed it. And yeah. her stage presence is incredible. Yeah. And the character is just nine foot six. What the fuck? <laughs> like, where did that come from? What is that about, mommy? <laughs> <laughs> so I just think it was really brave. I just thought it was a really interesting choice for Capcom um, to do something like that. Obviously, the other characters are also great. You know, I mean, they do amazing jobs. I mean, uh, Becca, Paula, Jesse, they absolutely fucking nailed the roles. I got to work with Nicole Tompkins again. I really liked Dark Chris Redfield, who didn't like Dark Chris Redfield. That was pretty awesome with Jeff Shine. Um, you know, there were some really ta- really interesting um, takes on all characters, which I liked. Seeing Todd's character develop a bit more was really nice because obviously in the first game, he was a total blank slate and he was supposed to be like that. Yeah. So it was interesting. I haven't played the game yet, which I'm still, oh, I'm going to be doing that on a stream. No, I'm going to stream it at some point. I'll try it at some point. I just, I, I'm kind of busy at the moment. So it's kind of, it's kind of hard to fit everything in, man. Yeah. Um, I'm also a single parent. So I have a little daughter. So oh, that's nice. like How old is she? an interesting joke. Uh, she's seven. Yeah. Oh, she's nice. Cool. Yeah. She's very cool. But it's like, you know, having, and I'm, you know, people know that. So I'm not, I'm pretty open about that. But, um, yeah. But juggling being a co-parenting single parent and it's work tough. and life and pandemic, it's just, it's a trip, you know? Yeah. So I don't play games that much anymore is the thing. Yeah. Uh, I will play it for sure. For Does sure. she know how cool dad's job is? No, man. She just, <laughs> she, she like throws herself off high shit. And I said, no, 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 no. And she's like, you do this for a living. It's ridiculous. She basically like, uh, I don't really talk about it that much, but I'm very proud of her. Uh, but the one thing I have, I think I've spoken about this before, is that she does question my my job and when she was like when she was very little like she started learning to talk she came to set and there's a picture of peter elliott and her peter elliott by the way if you don't know is the godfather of animal movement in film and television and now games uh, he was pre andy circus pre you know terry notary mm. he's like the granddaddy of animal movement he, he did tarzan lord of the apes uh quest for fire all these amazing movies back in the 70s 80s being an ape like doing ape work it's, it, check him out he's amazing um and he he was a great friend he's a great friend and he he took my little one um because i didn't have a child care that day on the studio and there's a picture of them being monkeys because oh, she got to be a monkey in that's of the cool. apes and the thing except none of nobody said to her there aren't any monkeys in the game it's fucking apes <laughs> you know, it's like nobody, <laughs> nobody told her that so we just shot all this stuff and it's just you know it's not going to make it but after that oh. she just looked at me and went Daddy, you you play, like as a job. It's like yeah, it's a little bit more complex than that, darling. But yes, that's what I do. I play. I have a job. It's like no, you don't. Until you pay fucking rent, you don't have a job. That's not playing. That's the same thing. Go to your room. <laughs> so yeah, but she's great. She's very cool. Um, she's just got into games now. I deliberately wanted it to be late. So uh, we play games together now, which is very very hip. And but really not fun. not Rizzy, not just yet. Mm, might wait for that a little bit, man. She's kind of scared of like Lord <laughs> Vader, so I think yeah. we're going to the, to a liquor from Lord Vader is a little bit of a yeah. jump there, man. I think we're going to hold off. On well, that. you haven't played Resi. There's a very creepy creature at the Donner House at the. Really? Oh, <laughs> I, haven't played it yet. <laughs> I, I don't know if you've seen it, but 
I won't spoil it for you. Um, I'm trying to avoid them. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid as much spoilers as possible. Yeah, full full spark says, were you familiar with the Resident Evil series before you started acting in it? Did you do any research Mm. within the fan community to prepare for these roles? Um, two questions. So the first question, yeah, I knew Resident Evil. I played it back in 1996, whatever it was, whenever that day. You're was not it. that old. It came, Come on, I'm fucking old. I'm old, older than I look. I, I, I couldn't believe you're 42. Um, I tell you what, you look I'm good, older mate. than that actually. Are you? Far out. <laughs> yeah. mate, you... So I'm 44 this year, man. Really? Yeah, yeah man. You need to tell yeah, me a yeah. secret off here. Uh, just fucking stay bouncy, stay distracted, and <laughs> keep, I don't know, just enjoy life as much Eat as well, possible. Yeah. yeah. Eat well, well, yeah, yeah, eat well, I guess. But just, I think the main thing is speed. Like, always take the stairs. It's like a good. I attitude. like that. Like, oh. I like that. Yeah, no, always take the it. stairs. So I'll use yeah, that one. <laughs> um, so yeah, I knew the games. I used to play it badly. I don't think I ever made it past like the first 10, 15 minutes of the mansion before I just turned it off and went. This is not a game I'm good at. I should just not play it. My ego can't deal with it. I played like two and three, same thing. Couldn't deal with it. Fuck it. No more. I'm not going to touch it. Until I, and so I was aware of it. And obviously, I watched the films as well and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, very aware of Resident Evil and liked it a lot. Just was terrible at it. Um, <laughs> and uh, But when it comes to research, when I played Nikolai for, and Nemesis, for instance, I didn't want to go back and try to take another actor's take on those characters. Because in fairness to the actor, the actors that played those roles in the mocap and voice then, I don't think it did mocap necessarily, but with the voice and stuff, they that was their take on it. Mm. And I felt like this is a remake. So it's kind of like a revamp in a way that, that I want to take my character with the script they g- gave me for Nikolai and, and find a different way of him being. So it wasn't just like, that's just Nikolai, you know, re, re, uh, relaunched into 2019. It's your own take. Yeah, it's my own take. It's not somebody else's. And I think that's important for people, for actors. If you, and it doesn't happen very often, but if you are lucky enough to step into the shoes that another actor has fulfilled, you have to make it your own. You can't just like, you shouldn't emulate somebody else. You should be like, well, they put me in this role for a reason. So mm-hmm. I, it's because they want to hear my voice and my take on this character that is you know, liked a lot and is thought well of. So... I have to honor that by really just finding my way through it. And if they like it, they're going to cast you. And if they cast you, they're going to want you to see how far you can take it with the director and the writers and everybody. So, no, I didn't watch any of the playthrough. I, I watched after we shot our stuff. I, I think I watched like a, somebody play through the original two. And yep. I was quite happy that, that that Nikolai was quite different from my Nikolai. Um, so I was pretty happy that I'd obviously made the right choices for me and the actor had made the right choices for him back yeah. in 1998 or whenever it was. Yeah. yeah. People here I don't believe that you're 44, by the way. Not yet. Oh, 44 in, you know, a few months. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. I'm a child of the 70s, technically. Well, 90s child. But yeah. yeah, I was uh, born in 77. Yeah. Wow. J- James I Williams, I can't, set, I can't ask him that because he hasn't finished the game yet. So we don't want to spoil him. Nope. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but thank you, James. Uh, Nash, great job in Resident Evil 8. Uh, thank Do you. Do you want to be the... Also, don't want to be that guy, but could you say Ethan Winters as Heisenberg? Oh. Yeah, okay. sure, sure, sure. Um... <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Let's, <clears throat> Let's see what you're really made of. Ethan Winters. Like that. Nice. Is that right? I think I was right. <laughs> what was your who's your favorite character to voice of all or, or perform as um that you've this done in your career? Do you have a favorite? Yeah, thank you. It's an interesting question. I don't have a favorite. I definitely have like my top five, six, seven, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I've been very, very lucky and very blessed that people have given me a shit ton of amazing characters to play. <laughs> amazing friends. Oh, no, I'm serious. I'm, no, yeah. I wake, I literally go look at my CV and go, fuck me. People have been so kind. <laughs> and they're so generous. I'm glad someone else says fuck me because that's my saying, but. Fuck me, yeah, right. Yeah, You're like, fuck fucking me, hell, yes. man. Fuck me. Sometimes a fuck me is exactly what you mean in that circumstance, yeah. right? So there is like definitely fuck me moments of fuck me, man. I've done, you know, people have taken a risk on me. Yeah. Um, I'm really, I, I, I really enjoyed like the last few years, characters have definitely been something special. Um, you know, Nikolai Heisenberg. I, I'm getting a huge kick out of uh, 
out of a starian, I have to say, because I have oh. license to almost say anything. Yeah. And my writer, Stephen Rooney, not my writer, the writer for Larian, that I get to work with, uh, Stephen Rooney, who is the main writer for Starian, is just an absolute genius. And I improvise a tiny bit, usually for my own ends, but very little of it goes in. Most of the stuff that goes in is his writing because yeah. it's just sublime. Um, and he's just like really fun. He's like just... He's just, I can literally say anything. Somebody likened him to like the Cartman of Baldur's Gate. <laughs> it's like, you can just say, say what you're thinking, but that nobody would dare say. Do you know what I mean? Oh, um, it's just great. Cool. I'm just really enjoying it. So Starin's great. Uh, I loved playing in Detroit, like uh, playing um, Kamsky and, and Gavin Reed, which Gavin Reed was never supposed to be a thing, by the way. He was like supposed to just be a dickhead that you didn't like, so you would like Connor more. He was not supposed to be of interest. Really? So, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. Man. Like he's like people have really taken to him. And I'm like, dude, he's just like a pass. He's just, he's just a dick. He's just the office dick. <laughs> so the fact that people like him so much, I think, is really cool. And they, they kind of made him their, their own, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got a, I got a, I got a humble brag. I was the first in the world to get all the trophies and achievements get the platinum trophy for detroit first in Fuck the world. me that's really hard thank you yeah that's amazing although i I'm, did have the so game early so it's a bit of a yeah, cheat don't say so sure man that's a that's a, <laughs> a that's a tall fucking order dude thank you all right that's, that's one game to another that's that's pretty cool i, I love cool. that game man i tell you what that is it's a great. phenomenal game what's it like working with brian and and david and Brian was great. I got to meet yeah. Clancy as well. That was fucking oh, awesome. Clant oh, yeah. Clancy Brown is a he's a tour de force, man. He was oh. something else. Uh, he was. I was generally nervous when I met him. I was like, oh shit, it's Clancy Brown. <laughs> Mr. Krabs so, himself. Mr. Krabs himself. Um, yeah, uh, it was amazing. Um, I met Brian. Uh, I'm pretty sure I, I did almost all of my days were with Brian because obviously I, I was interacting with his character from two different characters' points of view which is always interesting. Different options, um, yeah. Yeah, but also, like, the relationships are wildly different, obviously. And even though Kamsky's only in it a little bit, and I was very lucky to be asked to come back and and do the um, sort of short film, uh, which is, like, pre the story, like, five years before, which is really cool. I really love the fact that Ben asked and David asked me to come back and do that with Adam. Um, but Brian was great because I, I met Brian and fell in love with him instantly. Um, he's a very generous actor, a very sweet kid, like a really, really sweet kid and a very talented actor as well. So that combination was just joyous to be around because it was instantly like, I'm going to play now. Is that cool? Okay, going to Okay, good. So he used to like throw me some improvisational curveballs, which would just that'd be brilliant. And I would have to roll with and I'd throw him a few things as well that he'd have to not break character because he would be laughing inside his head. But it has <laughs> Connor, so you can't do that. Yeah, shit. Yeah. So but it was great. We had uh, we had no bad days. I mean, I this sounds like one of those things that people say when they're in, interviewed about the work and stuff. But I genuinely have had not a single bad day doing performance. Catch, That's amazing. Like man. ever. I've had challenging days. And I've had yeah. days like, fuck, I know. But, but it's all had a bad day. It's your passion. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And uh, yeah, definitely working on Detroit. The I think it was three or four sessions I did out in Paris. That was that. It was great. That was hardcore, pure work, and I loved it every second of it. It was great. Is is David Cage a madman with his um, no, formulas really. and algorithms of all the different and choices? He's got and... those. Yeah. He's got those. But David was very generous with me. Um, yeah. As was uh, Ben, who was the other director, the co-director of that, and also Adam, who's the writer, and and uh, Clancy and, and and Brian, and all the actors that were were in there with us as well. There was quite a few. Um, he's not no for me. It was very much like he he sometimes would let me play a lot, and then sometimes he'd be very very specific with his notes, saying, "You know, I need you to do this because of this reason." And I found that the way he was telling me of why that this choice needs to be like this was quite succinct. So it was like, okay, yeah, I understand that. That's cool. Let me see if I can, let me find a way of doing that because I understand what you're talking about and why you need that. As opposed to sometimes you can get into situations where, uh, I did a TV series once that it was okay, it was really fun, but I had a director that turned around to me when I was asking him a genuine question that I actually needed as an actor. Um, that, cause it didn't make any sense at all. In fact, I think they were making a mistake actually. And I asked him, he just went, just do it please. Just do it. I'm running out of time. Just do it. I was like, okay, I'll do it. It's a terrible idea, but okay, that's what you want, you know. And it leaves a very sour taste in your mouth. Yeah. You think I'm putting my heart and soul into this character, and you're just saying, telling me just do it. 
arbitrarily. Yeah. Like without any like, conversation, and it's not because I'm eating up a lot of time, by the way. So is that just you know, a that sour was a, taste in your mouth? A little bit. Just makes you feel like I, I, I leave my blood on the floor on every job I do, mm. literally sometimes. <laughs> and the, I do stunts as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but with people like Brian, uh, people like David, and people like uh, Steve Knebley, and all the other actors, the wonderful actors, Alex Epstein on We Happy Few, um, you know, all these amazing actors and uh, directors I'm working with in performance capture i've never had that conversation of just do it because i told you do you know what i mean mm -hmm. people really are passionate but they also really seem to respect actors points of view of asking those questions which is great because so, hopefully if like me you do pick your battles you know you don't always have to ask every question continually all the time because actually sometimes you know what the answer is that can be about insecurity i think but <clears throat> when you need to ask those really big in questions and it might take five minutes of discussion. You know, those directors there support you and they give you good answers, or at least they talk to you about why you have a different point of view on this thing. And I appreciate it a lot. So David let me play. I, I loved working with David and Ben and Adam and Brian and everybody at Quantic Dream. And I met all the Quantic Dream devs. They're incredible. They worked so hard on that mm -hmm. game. Um, and that's the thing I think I'd say is that I really am flattered and appreciate the fact that people want to interview me about the roles I do. I would say, please, anybody that plays a game, read the, the credits. The devs are the heroes. All, they're yeah. the heroes, man. Yeah. We're the cherry on top. We're the icing. Yeah. We're the, we're the sort of like, you know, spruced hyperbole sprinkled on top of the of the. They make it happen. Of the, yeah, man. They're the, they're the people that put the heart and soul and the, t the huge amounts of time. Um, like I said, if we're lucky to be working on a game for a couple of years as voice or something like that, or voice and mocap, that's great. But we're not there every single day. You know, if somebody, mm -hmm. unfortunately, that crunch thing happens, we're not there for the crunch. Mm -hmm. We're there to, to play and have fun and really bring the characters to life. But they're the ones that make the game. So if you don't read credits on games, please do. Because mm -hmm. there are hundreds and hundreds of people that put far more work in than I did to every game. You know? It's funny you I say that. There's, that's one thing I always do. I always watch the credits from start mm. to finish, no matter how it's long. Important. Yeah. yeah. I just, yeah. yeah, I've always, it's always a tradition. It's same for movies as well. I'll do that. Same as for well. movies, man, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll try to read it. Um, what was the hardest game you've played? Because I guess you did mention you were a gamer. <laughs> Um, what do you, yeah, I guess hardest game, hardest game yeah. and what have you been playing lately? Because I saw you were playing um, Valheim over in your stream today, weren't you? I like Valheim. Uh, yeah. I surfed a deer today. That was pretty fucking epic. <laughs> I don't think the game is supposed to let you surf a deer, but I fucking did it, and it's on film. It's actually recorded. You can see it on the internet. It happens. The thing. I oh wow! Nice. Um, I've yeah. got the, I've got uh, your Twitch in the description, by the way, guys. If you want to go follow. Oh, thank Neil. you very much. Yeah, yeah. come check it out. Um, <clears throat> hardest games actually weirdly were the Resident Evil games for me. I was not very good at them. Yeah. I was just bad at them. They were just really tough games, especially because yeah. I never did like an easy setting for the early times I played it. I was always trying to like do it on a normal setting at least, have some pride. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I couldn't complete, I never completed a Resident Evil game until I played the remake on a stream I did last year when I started streaming. Which like last Two or year. three? Oh, three, my, three, the one I was in. Um, it was the first time I completed a Resident Evil game. I'm not kidding. It was just like fucking hell. So yeah, RE games have always been like, they're really hard games to play. Yeah, they're not, they're not um, easy. They're not, they're not easy games, man. No. They make I've been you playing work a lot for of it. stuff recently. Fucking do, right? Jesus. Yeah, Too what, much, I think. So what else have Too you much. played recently? <laughs> besides, I know you're busy, but is there anything else you've played? Yeah, I was playing South Park, uh, Fractured Butthole. Oh, nice. Which is just great i love the south yeah. park i think it's amazing that was really fun very funny um i've been trying to finish off pillars to dead fire that's on the quiet it's not streaming that's just for me wow because I, I i'm a huge rpg fan that's a nerdy game and this is coming yeah, from fucking, a nerd by the way yeah dude so i'm, I'm a carrying geek brother I'm, I'm there with you. <laughs> um i've actually i reinstalled mech warriors four mercenaries but for the mtx like freeware version <laughs> And I've got like a fucking Hotus joystick thing. Oh wow! I'm playing okay. that on the sly, man. That's a little. That's a dip into my private life. But yeah, um, I've been right. playing that on the sly. That I was. It's pretty fucking awesome. I got it to work as well. It was like fuck yeah. That's like 2004, <laughs> man. It's like you know back when Shit, we used to have to yeah, like, sticks together to make the internet work. Um, <laughs> that's like so, 20 years, yeah, nearly. It's like 20 years. A good 20 years. Ago. <laughs> um, I play a lot of stuff like that. I'm I'm kind of going into 
get into more like console games. I've never really been that much of a console player, um, which is stupid because I work in games that are largely console. I did try Cyberpunk. I enjoyed it. I think it was a shame they didn't release it in early access because I think it would have been a lot forgiven. That's a shame. Mm. Uh, I feel bad for them because they they put a lot of lot of work into that game, dudes. Like I huge. Know. So I feel bad for everybody that that got flack from that and. You know, and probably unfairly because it was probably only a few people's decisions to release it early in that state. You know, um, yeah. but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed my time in, in Night City. I think it was pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like a lot of games like that. I, I don't want to play Baldur's Gate three yet. I'm going to play that when it's fully released. Because yeah, really, I was going to say I don't I really know much about that, that game. Yeah. Is it is it in early access? Maybe. Is it to release soon? What what's the deal with that? No, it's early access, which okay. they said from the beginning. This is a it is a mammoth game. Oh, I know that. It's enormous. Yeah. Um, I'm a huge fan of like the old Fallout games, the RPGs, and uh, the Baldur's Gate games RPGs. And this game is ginormous, like ginormous. Um, huge. I can't tell you where we're up to. But I've been on this thing since September 2019. We are we are not we're not we you know we we we're some really? ways away. What? <laughs> so, oh we're still goodness. working hard. Um, I can't. I'm not going to tell you like what's going on. Obviously, that's no, anyway. no. But you know, it's it, we're still working. You know, <laughs> so is that something you're working on every month or every other month, or you can't kind say? of? Yeah, I mean, the thing about it is that Larian are amazing, and I genuinely mean that. I'm a fan of Larian. I work with Larian. But they're amazing because they they are listening to feedback from the players. It's early access, sure, but they're completely honest about the state of everything, and they even tell you like at some point this save will not work. Be prepared for that. So people are, are completely transparent, but they're also taking a lot of feedback and implementing it in the game, which is just awesome. And they've added things which they've gone on record for saying. So this is not me saying something I shouldn't, but they've gone on record. They wanted to add a thread that of something that you could do in the game. And they knew that if they did that, they'd have to write an extra thousand lines of dialogue or something to make that work and mechanics to make it work. So, and they do that because they they really want the game to be the best experience as possible. I'm a massive fan of Larian. And if you haven't played it, folks, check out Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. You know, they're, they're shorter games. It's great. It's a great experience. It's really cool. Super fucking geeky. Like, so you're, you're, like, you're you may not get you may not get laid for a while if you go public. With that information. <laughs> My girlfriend just be like, "Nah, mate, you you play like, Baldur's Gate. You're doing what? <laughs> you're playing what? <laughs> really? I'm just gonna pack my bag." <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you, Bentley's cool. We already got him to say bitch. Don't worry, you can go back yeah, in sorry. the VOD later. Uh, Xander <laughs> says, "Love your work. I hope to see you in the future in plenty more so games." You. Could you just say hi to Pony for me? Hi, Pony. Hi. <laughs> hi, Pony. Hi, Pony. Hello, Pony. Hi. Hello, hello, Pony. Uh, if you had a choice, hi, Pony. Hi, Pony. Pony. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure which of those was appropriate. So. Uh, yeah, it depends on the on your mood. James <laughs> sure. James he says, if you had a choice, which RE game would you like to be thrown into? Obviously, ones that you haven't been in. You've been in half oh, of them. To but... play. <laughs> um, to be in. Um, Nick Apost- four, maybe? Uh, well, actually, Nick Apostolidis is actually a, become a good friend of mine, uh, but we have not worked together. So I'd love to work with Nick. Uh, on yeah. something um if we could go back in time and like just kneecap the actors that played roles with him that i could potentially play i'd do that i just like accidentally kneecap them a little bit not like badly but just they couldn't make that audition that day and then i get to work with nick um yeah he's I'd leon for anyone with... that doesn't know he's leon yeah. for anybody knows and yeah. he does an amazing job at leon he's he's a, and if you meet the guy like if you get to know him he's leon like the, he is he is leon like that is a perfect role for him to play yeah um i'd love to work with, with nick on something at some point but who knows man i mean I've, I've been lucky to be in two i'm not assuming i'll be in another one quite frankly um but i'd love to yeah so can you yeah. talk to me about your stuff with nemesis in the the behind the Ooh. scenes of that and the performance capture because yeah, sure. i find that fascinating because you do a lot of creature work <coughs> as you said with I the do, apes yeah. and nemesis and like yeah, ha- what's that, that like beginning yeah you, you did ask me like i not only do i like do direction now and, and performance and consultation and i mentor an academy and i have a production company and i all that kind of stuff um i also do creature work and stunts and combat and martial arts and whatnot so creature work is amazing because it is um doing performance without dialogue or doing performance without 
when it is quite pure in the sense of you're trying to create something which is animalistic like um, and you have to convey a scene you have to convey um, the emotions of this creature the wants and needs and you cannot rely on dialogue it's quite a trip it's quite an, it's quite freeing actually in some ways and playing things like nemesis where obviously you know there are these like hulking killing machines but it's, it is pure play it's just so much fun Oh. I get to be this enormous, like, nine, ten-foot fucking hulking, unstoppable <laughs> killing machine, chasing my friends down corridors and smashing <laughs> doors out of the way. I actually released some behind-the-scenes stunts of me playing Nemesis and kicking several oh, where's that? Sh- I gotta uh, watch shades it. of shit. Yeah, it's on my Instagram somewhere, nice. I think. Uh, I think it's still on there. But it's like I was picking up fucking you know, stunt performers and throwing them through carriages. <laughs> and ki- I was, like, kicking people in the chest and they were on wires. They get slammed back against a wall. It's great, man. It's so much fun. Oh, that um, sounds brilliant. There's a lot of playtime involved with this. And you still have to take it very seriously, which is insane because, you know, you're playing a 10-foot high killing machine. Um, but there's a lot of fun to be had. Um, and one thing it does as well, it gives you very good awareness of your own physicality. It keeps me in good shape. Um, mm-hmm. So part of my job is to be um, have a malleable, strong body that isn't like huge, but at the same time is it can adapt to any type of role that I'm thrown at. I mean, I played all kinds of things. Like I used arm extension stilts. I've used um, done zombies and creature works for Strange Brigade, for Zombie Army Trilogy, for um, Zombie uh, Army Trilogy. Unravel what were you in Zombie? Yeah, Army yeah. Trilogy? I mean, I'm in that quite a lot. I played Zombie Hitler. Most you do of the not zombies. really. Yeah, actually, Zombie Army Trilogy, not the fourth one, but the, the, one to, the third one. Yeah. Most of the new stuff in the third uh, version of that, all four guys and me <laughs> getting into the cable car. Really? I have to do a thing. I termed it ghosting. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't work out. Yes. Yeah, so there's a, a, one, in, one example is they step into a cable car, and the cable car, like one of the guys, the Russian guy is like doing his foot like this. Yeah. yeah. Not sure about it. And then the guy sort of get him in, like a BA Brackers. And you're moment, both. Right? I play all four of them. Oh and my I goodness! Do the scene four times, <laughs> starting with one person going into the cable car, like entering here, turning around, holding the thing. Another person would then have to time going past this one. The third one was then going to do the foot thing, which I actually came up in the middle of the of shooting with um with Mark Bradshaw, and he and I, well, I just said, "Can I just try this thing?" So I did that, and then the fourth one comes around where the second one was, stops, sees the third one like nudges him or something and then goes past and then the third one goes in. So all four of them are me. And I'm having to try and work out with the director. Like, did if I do that, what the timing for, it was a fucking trip. But oh. we did it. It was cool. It was really cool. I like shit like that. So then I also oh, got to play right. zombies. And there's actually an April Fool's um, gag we did with Rebellion. Uh, I, I did a dance routine, totally improvised. It was the end of the day shoot. And we did like three hardcore days of mocap including all the cut scenes and it's just me and the volume and right at the end of the day uh mark and the other guys came up to me and could you do you used to be a dancer right i was like yeah, yeah i used to dance i was like well could you do like an improvised dance routine to michael jackson's thriller i just do it because we want to do like an april fool's advert i was like yeah sure i mean i mean be actually like 10 fucking hours let's just do it yeah okay. so we did it we shot it one take it's all improvised i had no idea what i was doing i was just making up fucking dance moves and it's oh on the internet goodness. if you type in zombie army not... trilogy april fools yeah yeah oh, type I'm gonna it, check you, this you out find now. it now it's zombie army trilogy april oh, fools no. neil newton and there's me playing zombie hitler with a whole bunch of like backing dance zombie it's all army me. trilogy trilogy april fools april I think fools it is. It's like, this is just playtime, man. It's all play, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. I've got it here. Mm-hmm. Rebellion. That's it. During the mocap, the team put Thriller on as a joke. What happened next <laughs> was... Oh, my God. They just recorded me dancing. And so, can you just dance? I was like, yeah. Right. So, we just made it up on the spot. It was just one take. <laughs> we just did it one take. It's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be... I, another life, I used to be a dancer, man. So, you know. Really? <laughs> Yeah, when I was a kid. Oh, wow. So do you ever get to use, (laughs) besides that, do you ever get to use it on set, the dancing skills? Do they come in Um, handy? I used to get bullied quite a lot. So I went into martial arts instead. So that's like, that's how I transferred from one to the other, right? So, but yeah, sometimes I get to dance. I dance a lot in the ROMs, which I'm not supposed to do. Um, There's some behind the footage stuff of myself, Nicole Tompkins and William Hope, who's amazing to work with. 
he's from um he's from aliens you know that, that yeah, amazing yeah. actor and jeff shine and all of us are sort of like bopping out to <laughs> some music I, I like music a lot so i throw music on whenever we warm up in the volume and it's a big part of my warm up it's like playing random fucking music give me some so, of yeah, your favorite 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 artists or bands oh shit dude i mean Put you on the spot. I, I listen to I listen to stuff like Jurassic Five, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden. I like uh, my daughter's really into um, what the hell's her name, Dua Lipa. So I'm listening a lot to a lot of Dua Lipa at the moment <laughs> to keep on on track with my my daughter. Um, I listen to people like Nina Simone. Um, oh shit, Nina Simone and um, uh, Marvin Gaye. I'm a huge fan of. I, I just have a very, very diverse. I like, I like it. Yeah, I like techno as well. I mean, I have a very, very wide. The reason is because I decided not to try and limit my music taste because my characters, I make a, a playlist for all my characters and my characters could like country and Western. Two kinds of music here, country and Western. Um, so, and I may not like that. So I can't limit myself to not liking music. So I decided as an early, as a younger actor, when I was, well, before I was even professional, that I would keep a very wide, broad taste level with books, with fiction non-fiction and also culture and art and also music because my characters may like that and i may not so mm. i have to find a way of, you know being able to dig into okay i draw the line at polka i'm gonna say that i draw the line polka is <laughs> a step too far I, th I feel but i like classical music as well man i like arias you know nozzi de figaro is one of my favorite operas and you know i'm i'm i have an open mind <laughs> am i am i wrong tell me correct me if i'm wrong that you know how to yodel am i wrong Maybe a little bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> no, I don't know how to yodel. Okay. I don't know how to yodel. That's not true. Okay. Not I've true. got that wrong. <laughs> it's got wrong. Uh, thank you, Nash, I for think that. I could yodel. Hey, you, 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 I reckon you could if you gave it a crack after a day. If I had a, like a yodel, yodeling killing machine I had to play, then yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to <laughs> Yodeling it. killing machine. There's a different yeah. game for you. Thank you, Dash. Uh, Taco Guy, does the game explain where Heisenberg's power came from? I don't, I don't know. it does. I don't think it does. No. Um, I would love to do, like, somebody talked about doing, like, a DLC, like, before they all became part of the family. Oh, that'd or, be as so a, good. As a new family. That'd be fucking great. I would be oh. really down for that. I have no idea if they're going to do that or not. Literally no idea. So I'm not saying that, like, it's a tease. I don't know. And I don't know. It'd be great. Be great to see something like that Do so know, that's obviously it's the capcom folks to do, decide all that kind of stuff i'd be shocked if they didn't do another game with eve with lady d i'd be shocked after the she's reception an amazing character seriously yeah she's an amazing character yeah i and really this is the so. fastest I selling a... re ever i think in the first yeah film. i heard that yeah so Was it three million in four days it's it's insane it's mind-blowing yeah yeah um you wanted to just wanted to let you know the Instagram and description of the stream is off. Oh, that's my fault. I'll change that. Don't worry. I'll change that once we go off air. That's so sorry. Neil Newborn will yodel for cash. As we should change. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got the wrong Instagram in. I'll put it in now. That's all right. Good. Neil well, New. I think it's just Neil Newborn. Yeah. Yeah, it's just Neil Newborn. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So you got a few more projects that you can't tell, talk to us about. I'm guessing. Uh, I've got a very big triple A that I really want to talk about oh. that has started like being like trailered and stuff. Uh, I'm not voicing. I'm just, I did performance capture for like so many characters in that. And I did a lot of uh, consulting on it and I uh, did a lot of stunts on it. So that was cool. But that's not going to be my voice. That's just me doing sort of all the action and stuff. Kind of like I did with Kingsglaive. Yeah. Um, like, for example, I did, I did a lot of stuff that wasn't voice. I did get to voice character in that, but like an example of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's going to come out, I think, this year. Um, I've got an animated film that's supposed to come out this year, but with the pandemic, that might come out later. Mm -hmm. um, I just finished doing uh, stunt coordination on a TV thing for an SVOD that we can't talk about yet Jeez, either. you're busy. Um, How do you fit yeah, this busy, in? Man. Yeah, I'm busy. Yeah, there's a, a pilot thing that I'm involved with, which I can't talk about either. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think of, I mean, yeah, there's, there's quite a few That's things right. coming out, uh, but just play yeah, Resident. Sorry, everyone needs to play village. Uh, is it yeah, when, you, that, when yeah. you're on the mocaps, like the performance, the volume, as you call it. Yeah. Um, and you're, you're an actor. Yeah. Okay. You're just doing acting or in the suit and you're not consultating or you're not the director. Do you ever find mm -hmm. yourself 
trying to hold back that side of you, yourself. Do you know what I mean? And try no, to... I do. It's not. I'm I'm a talker, as you may have noticed. Uh, I do talk. <laughs> I do talk a lot, and I'm very bouncy. Um, that's not because I'm trying to hide something, by the way. <laughs> actually, it actually it is. Um, I smile and laugh a lot. I think primarily because I have resting psycho face. Because you know, it's, I have resting psycho face, man. It's it's not a good look. People get unnerved if I don't smile. So, um, well, so you no, have to pretend to smile. Yeah, like I'm always happy because I'll just fucking kill you. No, it's like, um, <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, that's not true. I, 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 I don't ever have an issue with that because um, I love ensemble work. I like working in a big cast. Yeah. I like like playing multi-role characters and that kind of jazz. And I just like being a part of something. So if, um, like, we're working with Steve, for instance, like Steve is the boss, you know, I usually go up to him and go, Steve, I got, I got an idea. And his, his response is almost always no. And then, of course, he lets me try it one time. And if I don't get it on the first time, then he, that's, that's the idea done. Um, which Steve's good like that. So, um, but I don't have an issue with fitting with other people's visions or other people's projects because it's their project or their vision. Mm. And I'm a part of that. Um, directing, I've only done like four or five gigs now, maybe, maybe six gigs now, I think. And it, it's a different thing with a director because obviously when you're coming as a director to performances, you're trying to get the best out of them. You're not trying to demean them, make them feel bad about their job. You're trying to support their decisions. You're just trying to guide them into what your vision is. So I respect that as a performer. I know how hard it is to direct and how to be that person. That everybody has questions and everybody needs a little bit of attention sometimes to work out what they need to do for their character. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy gig, man. So for me, no, I don't ever have a problem going from one thing to the other. I'm just as happy being a performer as I am consulting performing as i am um doing little bits of direction that i've done so um yeah and you don't I find like, yourself like, like sort of consulting within that role like doesn't no, i slip respect in. the boundaries yeah um, i'm usually asked to do that so ah, okay for instance if i'm if i'm with uh the project the five-month project that my production company uh did the casting for and the consultation for and coordination for we were brought in, I was brought in specifically as a performer, but also to work with the non mocap performance capture actors who'd never done this type of stuff before. So I was going to perform a whole bunch of stuff. And I was also there to help guide those people, ease them into what the volume is, what, how mocap works, alongside the studio technicians who also are there to talk to them and work with them. So, um, uh, so I'm losing the thread of the helm I was talking about. So yeah, going into those kind of roles, um, mm. yeah, I really like doing that because it feels like we're just all raising the game of the project. Mm. You know, it's it's a, the project comes first. So if yeah. I get for, go up for an audition and I don't get the gig, it's because the project didn't need me. They needed the other actor. And my take on this character wasn't appropriate for the project. That's how you have to think of these things. You know as opposed to thinking, oh shit, I didn't get that role. It's like, well, the role was never yours to begin with. You know, you were just showing your take on it. So if it doesn't fit in with the vision, then you're not gonna do it. That's okay, that's not a problem. It's just that the, the project was heading in this direction. You're like in that direction or something, you know? So mm -hmm. I like working ensemble. I like working with many different people and collaborating together to push this one project forward in a funky way, you know, I like it. Man. I love so, working. I'm workaholic. <laughs> man, yeah, you are an inspiration. Uh, oh, thank you, man. What that. music do you associate with Astrion? And I want to also ask you, what do you associate with Heisenberg? What do you reckon he listens to? Um, Astarion, I'm not going to talk about his music choices because I'm still playing him, if you don't mind. That, that's no, cool. that's fine. Otherwise, I think they wouldn't work anymore. Um, with Heisenberg, he listened, he listened to a lot of... Um, oh, damn, I actually... I can't remember the name of them. I actually listened to quite a few of their tracks. I wonder if I can find it. I'm just going to have a look at his playlist right now. I love that you got uh, playlists for all these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I make so them all cool. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. I haven't heard of anyone um, doing that. Really? No. Well, I think, it's kind of, I think it's more common than you think. Really? Um, anyway, it works for me anyway. I'm listening to stuff like Bonnie Raitt. Um, yep. I Can't Make You Love Me. <laughs> it's just a bit weird um there is actually there is actually one i really want to find that one if i can find it now it's it's a band that i hadn't heard of but it's like a they're a two-piece band american band heavy fucking rock yeah everyone like is really, saying they reckon metal or rock 
It wasn't metal. It was it was rock. Okay. More than, well, it was kind of heavy. It was bordering heavy metal rock. I'm going to find it for you. Industrial. Now if I can. Someone said here. A little industrial, very gritty, very dirty. I didn't know about them, but I came across them when I was in Los Angeles, and I just heard them on like a radio station or something. And I'm just trying to find the track because I can't remember the name. White stripes says Will says white stripes. They're similar. They're in territory similar territory to um, Blood uh, Royal Blood. The Cold Stairs, Cold Stairs. Uh, so this was one of the tracks. This one here, right? People want you to drop the playlist. <laughs> oh, nice. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's that's. And then it gets yeah. then it gets real fucking heavy the minute. Oh, drowned up. And again with the voice. Yeah. John, <laughs> I dug a grave for me. <laughs> John, won't you dig that grave? Like that. Uh, that to me is like, that's Heisenberg. People. Like that. And they get some metal. Just stop some one second. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. a, that is an example of like the kind of songs that I'm looking for in the characters because it's that metal edge, it's that like gritty, it's also kind of weird country, slightly out. Yeah, that kind of shit. People so want you to drop the playlist. Them, <laughs> People want you to drop the playlist, but I'm, he's he's not going to drop it, guys. Come it's on. not canon, dude. Nah. So it's like I can't, I don't have that kind of authority. <laughs> nah, you've got you've got that song to feed off, guys. You've got that song. If you want to think of a song of Heisenberg, Cold Stairs, John. <laughs> was in my head there you go now i um i also saw that you did am i right to are we all right to keep going mate i do you I'm, need to I'm be free, somewhere else? man it's you're a right? pandemic brother okay cool. i'm free all night i'm all good yeah um Thank you. horizon zero dawn you did some yeah, mocap yeah. for that mocap and stunts for that yeah it was fun so no character work just the mo just the mocap and stunts yeah, <laughs> I um I just did uh, motion capture and stunts for that. I did a lot of background stuff. I played the I did form full performance capture for the the sort of boss at the when who kills Rost. That's actually on my show reel, I think. Um, and I choreographed that fight sequence, and then I worked with a stunt coordinator called Nick McKinless, who then helped me with my choreography. And this is like going back in 2015, 16, man. Mm -hmm. It's a while ago. So Nick McKinnis, who's amazing. I've worked, I worked with him on Gangs of London, actually, on a TV thing uh, as part of stunt crew with him. Yeah, he's great. He's a really talented guy. He's been around for a long time. But he came in to just give a gloss over of the choreography I laid down. And, and it was, um, yeah, it was great. I had a lot of fun. We spent five months on that shoot. And wow. um, that's a long yeah, time. Yeah, I was doing five months just doing, coming in, playing around. I had to do a couple of Aloy stunts, which I got to say, men what? should not play women. Yeah, 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 I know. Men should not wow. play women, period. Like, I'm just saying that. I'm going on the record. Unless you are a very talented drag performer, men should not play women. We just, they're too complex. They're too, it's too nuanced and too subtle. Men can't do it. <laughs> women, female actors can play men. That is true. That's definitely true. Oh, okay. But male actors, yeah. there's something about, I don't know. It's just really hard to... To convincingly play um, a woman, it's just weird. So I did Aloy's some of Aloy's stunts that didn't require me to really move like Aloy. Like I did a couple of uh, jumps in the air, like shoot. I do archery and stuff, so I was like, on a trampoline, shooting down a bow, and then landing, combat rolling, then running. So shit like that, which was really fun. But then we also had some amazing female stunt performers that came in to do the bulk of Aloy's stuff, and they were like, you know, wrestling on top of things. And it's really fun. Did you ever really get a chance to play that game? That was another one where I was the first in the world, by the way, humble brag. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Damn, man. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shit. It's <laughs> my job, about, okay? Come on. Talking, well, you should start talking about me and start talking about your gaming <laughs> That sounds amazing. <laughs> that sounds pretty fucking awesome. Um, yeah, so, uh, it's, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, I haven't, I haven't played it, which is oh. insane. This thing's going to fall. Hang on a second, sorry. <laughs> Just gonna do that. There we go. You don't want to see it back there. It's, you don't want to see what's in, down that hole. Um, so, uh, yeah, the um, Horizon Zero Dawn I haven't played yet. I'm still looking forward to playing it. Again, it's like it's it's kind of weird with all these games that I have them. They're sitting there. They're downloaded. <laughs> but the I just time. The it's the time. time, man. I know. It's the time. It's an really RPG. Dedicate. It's not easy to it's get an through. RPG. Yeah. You know, I still haven't. I've only got like a third of the way through Red Dead Two. And I love that game. That's like my cowboy fantasy, man. So, you know, it's hard to play 
more than just five, 10 minutes of a game here and there. It's why I started streaming actually to see my friends and to play games properly. <laughs> so I can actually like, no, 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 this is work. This is definitely work. I can, I'm working right now, playing games for two hours. I'm working, I'm working. So yeah, that's why I think did I started you, streaming. Did you get inspiration from Brian? Because their community, I tell you what on Twitch, that's the most positive community I've ever seen. On a yeah, I mean, I've known known Brian the whole way through his like game career now, um, and I told him in Paris in the studio after we, I think it was the day before we were going to rap, or I was going to rap. I said, "This is going to be fucking huge for you, just you wait, and it's you're not going to know what's going to hit you, but use the opportunity and you know do what you do best, be you, and be your glorious, lovely person that you are, and it's going to be amazing." And he's created he and Amelia have created this really incredibly wholesome, lovely, hugely popular kind of Huge. massive online community. I mean, I think he single-handedly bumped up the sales by some margin based on him just being him outside of the game, you know? Um, they're Off amazing. Detroit, they're really you reckon? Cool oh, without a doubt. His community literally bumped the sales up. I have, I have no doubt. That Detroit is, and it is a great game. It is an amazing masterpiece of a game. I really believe that. Mm. But I also think that Brian himself and Amelia had a direct impact on the game sales because oh. of their community. You know, it was such a cool thing. I wouldn't put a pass for sure. Yeah, I believe it. And it was, it also came out on um, PC. That would have helped as well. What about Until Dawn, mate? Because I know you did stuff for that. I'm just rattling off some of my favorite yeah. games here. That you know, you've been in <laughs> half of them, so <laughs> we completed all of them first. Um, so... I'm not the first for that one. There you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was probably a boring. <laughs> um, yeah, I played. Uh, I did performance capture for Chris. Yeah. Um, and I did a tiny bit of Mike, um, but not very much. And I think that was actually predominantly all I did. I was on that for only five months. And there were a lot of other actors that came in and out. And they actually the interesting thing about that game is that they they already made the game for the PS3. Um, there's a buddy of mine, uh, Tony Morley, and a great friend of mine, Jessica Jeffries, who's now a fantastic performance capture casting director. She's actually one of the few in the UK that are dedicated to performance capture. She's amazing. Wow. Um, but she was, a, she was a performer back in the day. And she and Tony, Tony's actually retired from performance capture now. He's, I miss him terribly because I started right around when he was still working. But he and her, they spent a, a long time on the PS3 version. And they, they pretty much canned most of that footage and then redid it for the new generation launch. Wow, uh, the didn't PS4. Know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I came into it, they'd already shot like most of the game and they're just re redoing it. Um, which is pretty wild. So that That's was expensive, interesting isn't to it? Into. Yeah, but you know, I kind of I really saw the point of it. They used a lot of the stuff they already had, obviously, but they were just wanted to do a lot more again. And mm. actually I think they pretty much they shot the entire game again, actually. I'm not I think mean, that's an exaggeration. Yep. Certainly I shot a ton of stuff for Chris. And I also did a little bit of the killer as well, the killer in the early part of the game. Uh, I don't want to spoil it. It's been out for a long time, but I don't still want to spoil it. But yeah, the sort of killer with the, the fire extinguisher thing and, yeah. and the gas extinguisher and all that kind of stuff. It's, um, it's funny because fun. Rami it's Malek funny. was in that and then now he's gone amazing. on to... amazing. Isn't that crazy? He's amazing. But when we saw him in the game, he'd just done, I think, um, The Pacific. And I remember seeing him in Pacific going, who the fuck is that because he's incredible and i saw his footage of the, obviously we saw all the footage that was being made because we were just doing performance catch matching to their voiceover and yeah. facial movement that was shot in la yeah and i remember watching him going wow this guy is just tearing it up and it's, and it's a game you know where a lot of people sometimes get dismissive over just doing a game or whatever he wasn't he was in it it was like fuck. he stands out doesn't terrific. he He's so good. He's so good. Like, there's no other, no, no yeah. one close to him. Do you know what I mean? It's it's Rami he's Malek. Definitely, yeah. He's Rami Malek, and I think I think it's a really amazing experience as an as an artist to to find yourself in a position where people can say that you are genuinely a unique voice. I don't think it happens mm. very often no. in in any acting any part of the acting industry or entertainment industry, or even for directors actually, for that matter. You know, there are lots of directors that are very very talented but there's some directors that are just so unique they just create something wild you know quite amazing so, yeah. i'll give you a couple more mate and i once again i really appreciate your time and and you no, generous no um being so generous with us everyone's absolutely loved it um no, what about you. movies and tv anything you've watched lately that you can recommend to us 
I, I finally got into the expanse. I'm digging ah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really like it actually. Um, worth I think a watch? it's really interesting what they've been doing. Yeah, totally worth a watch. Um, I, I rinsed in the Inv uh, Invincible, which was cool. I haven't watched I really it yet. Everyone keeps telling me. I liked it. There's a couple of episodes that are a bit meh. But yep. on the whole, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I, there's a whole bunch of. I wonder if you want to watch the Underground Railroad. I haven't started that. Joel Ledger too. So yeah. Yeah, I think that, I hope it's good because it's such a heavy subject. It's an important mm. subject to talk about as well. So I hope they get it right because I think it's very. It's, I, I knew a fair amount about the un, Underground Railroad, uh, just because it's like interesting, you know. So I hope they find the balance right and they get it right because it's an important subject matter that actually a lot of people don't know. Especially in like in Europe, I don't think we're that aware of how bad it's been in America for African Americans and just other displaced nations, um, nationals, sorry, that are American but have very little understanding of their heritage, you know, because it just was eradicated. Um, mm. So I think it's important to that people watch things like that. Um, there's also like a whole. I would love to say I'm an Antiques Roadshow fan, but that's just not true. So, yeah, <laughs> it's just, that's a lie. I want to be interesting. And, no, <laughs> but again, it's like TV. You don't get that much time, man. You know, so I don't get a huge amount of time to watch TV either. So, You're yeah. trying to push through the games, let alone all the shows and movies. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. Dude. You sort of got to pick. Oh, you got to try and pick one, but then, yeah, I don't know. Like I said before, you got to pick your battles. Like today, yeah. I'm going to play an hour, three or 35 minutes of this game. That's all I'm going to do, you know. <laughs> Sure. Uh, um, who do you look up into the industry, mate? Like, is it is it a Troy Baker, Nolan North? Is it a Rob Paul? Who's who's? I met Nolan. I've met I've met Troy. I love them both. I think they're really fucking talented. Um, I like the fact that I, I I look up to Andy Circus a lot. I met obviously I worked and met with Andy. Um, he was amazing to kind of to get to know when I, my time at Imaginarium. Um, yeah, it's one of those things that I've been in this industry for a while now and spending 11 years in performance capture and, and games it's weird that i suddenly realized that i'm kind of one of the old guys you know um you want like to be old doing this a, kind <laughs> of yeah a little bit so i look up to a lot of actors like i look up to michael fassbender i look up to tom hardy i look up to you know richard burton i look up to like yeah. you know gary oldman i look up to like all these amazing yeah i look up to you know samuel L. jackson all these like really amazing fucking hell these amazing actors Woody Harrelson, all those kind of cats, right? Um, there's, uh, there are many favorites, by the way. I'm not just picking them out because they're my all-time favorites. There are many favorites, you know, Sidney Poitier or whatever. Um, but it's interesting being in performance capture that actually I'm on the flip side of it. I'm, I've been here for a long time. I've gone through maybe 100 projects or something more, either in voice, mocap, or performance capture. So in my world of performance capture, like, yes, there's... No, um, Nolan North and uh, Troy Baker and a whole slew of amazing talent. Um, but I'm sort of up there in terms of experience. Oh, yeah. So so <laughs> from my point of view, like, I don't know if I draw inspiration from many people in performance capture. Yeah, I yeah. definitely look at the actors and go, wow, you're incredible. I have so much to learn from you and what in your stuff and the way you approach your work. And like, I'm a huge fan of... Um, uh, there's a lot, you know, I could keep talking about huge fans of lots of different actors, but it's kind of no point. So in terms of performance captures, not really. No, I don't really get inspiration from people in performance capture because I'm sort of in it and, and working in it a lot. Let me rephrase um, the question. Is there someone yeah. that you've seen lately in PCAP that has made you go, wow, they're the next star. They know what they're doing here. Maggie Robertson. Maggie. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think Nicole Tompkins is great as well. I worked with her as obviously as Jill, uh, Jill Valentine. Um, Jeff Shine's just the coolest motherfucker you've ever met. <laughs> Jeff Shine can say anything. He could read out the label, the ingredients of shoe polish, and somehow make it sound fucking cool. I would, <laughs> I've yet to learn that skill. And you know what? There is somebody that inspires me. Jeff Shine inspires me to learn how to say anything in a cool way. I don't know how to do that. So, <laughs> Jeff Shine, I look up to. You can tell him that if you speak to him. You should get one. Yeah, I need to get him on. I miss his voice. His key. voice is just yeah. disgusting. Disgustingly good. So yeah, yeah. So um, but yeah, there's, I, I kind of I call people kids. It's not that's probably very patronizing. <laughs> there is a lot of like I'm gonna say it anyway. There's a lot of very very cool kids coming through um, performance capture now, especially because actors see it. Well, not actors, sorry. People see it as the as the art that it is. It's not just an artistic endeavor. It's fucking art. 
and it's all performance capture really in a way not just you know mocap performance capture are technically different but it's all performance so there's a lot of cool young people coming through um i work with a, a person called uh, cheryl berniston who's a great young actor there's katrina durden who's an amazing martial artist and actor Ciara poor is another martial artist actor that works now in performance capture uh, Lucas E. White, uh, Wayne Gordon is like super cool. And so there's a lot of me, lot coming weird. through. There's a lot coming through, man. And Michael mm. Redmond is, is stellar. You should definitely watch out for him. I've worked with him twice, once in Sweden at Goodbye Kansas and on this other project we did together. Uh, Kazai Burroughs has been around for actually probably almost as long as I have, and she's done some amazing work. She was an alien isolation. There's some oh, of, like wow. amazing talent coming mm. through. And, oh, and not to mention all the American uh, talent and, and you know people from France and stuff coming through. I think the Brits and the Americans have really got performance capture though. I think we, because of our theater film background, we've done a lot more, it kind of makes more sense to us, I feel. Mm. Um, so I know a lot more talent, obviously, from, from that world anyway, but I think the Americans and the Brits are doing pretty well in performance capture because of our shared theater film thing. Um, mm -hmm. Because it is an amalgamation of those two things. But I would love to work more with um, Japanese actors and uh, European actors as well. I mean, Detroit Become Human, that, they had so many talented kids in it. Holy shit. Um, and French actors as well that were just stellar. So, um, yeah, there's a lot coming through now, which is gratifying. So do you just look back at your career so far and you're just blessed? Just thankful? Yeah, man. shit. Yeah. yeah. On paper, I would should never, if I was just TV and film, I would never play these roles. Like, there's no way I Isn't should be given crazy? half of these roles. It's fucking wild. It's great. But that's it what makes it so cool. Actor. Yeah, it really is. It means that I get to play the characters I would probably never play in TV and film. And the character actor, actors would get to play the hero, get to play the, 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 the roles they were never necessarily given because maybe they didn't look right for the hero or whatever, you know? But they get to play that now. Um, I think it's really important. This is a pure way of acting. I'm a huge, I'm a passionate advocate for performance capture, for performance capture, because it's a very pure way of acting. You're spending like 12 hours, you can spend 10 hours a day acting with a five minute change in between each scene. And you get rehearsal time as well. And it's like theater because there's bare props, no background, nothing looks like as it should. So you have to fill all the blanks with your imagination. But it's like film because you've got an HMC on and it's all a close up, except it's all a wide because the cameras can be anywhere and they're capturing the whole, whoop, shit, capturing the whole space of the volume. So it's like everything, it's just you're on, you're in the, you're in the round and you can also might have a virtual camera here. Mm. It's just fucking mind blowing. It's like fourth dimensional. They capture shit, everything. Right? Mm. Capture everything. Not only that, five actors can play one role. <laughs> you know, As you said, voice, yeah, skinning, stunts, uh, uh, maybe a specialist skill and maybe uh, the, an actor doing the bulk of the dramatic stuff, but not doing the voice, maybe. Five different performers all collaborating for one role. It's fucking cool. It's funny because I uploaded the, mo uh, the behind the scenes motion capture for Resident Evil. Mm -hmm. It's on about 3.5 yeah. million views. And, yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, and the people, it's surprising to me how many comments were like they didn't know the behind the scenes of gaming. I oh, couldn't okay. believe it. That's cool. But that's yeah. good that people are now seeing it and getting introduced to this stuff. So they know I hope it's so. not just voice acting, you know? Definitely. I think for a long time, listen, I didn't get into mocap and performance capture to be well-known and famous, right? I don't yeah. think anybody does in their right mind. I didn't, you know, because nobody's going to walk down the street and go, hey, you, the way that your ass moves left and right like that, you're the guy who played the thing <laughs> and the thing. You did the motion for that guy, right? I know that ass. I know that ass. <laughs> Honey, it's the ass. The ass I was telling you about, that's him. He plays that doesn't happen, do that. though. <laughs> no, it never happens. It's never happened. It never will happen, right? So, <laughs> so we didn't do that. We did it because it was pure acting. It was just play and character work. It was fun. It still is fun, you know? So this is a really lovely way for actors to spend more time acting in a day's work, in a working day, than you ever get in tv and film and and that's not because for any bad reason just that film you have a lot of setup the lighting has to be just right you have a location move large numbers of people that it could be a big spectacle or tv you know there's lots of different things shooting maybe different units shooting simultaneously or mm. theater where you're doing a complete run of the entire piece once or maybe twice if you're doing a matter thing in performance capture you're shooting from maybe 9 30 by the time you get ready so you arrive at 7 38 get ready maybe you're ready to roll at nine, ready to rock and roll at nine. Then maybe you don't break to lunch, like one o'clock. 
and then you're going straight through to like 435 36 30 maybe and that whole time yeah. you're acting in the volume playing a whole bunch of different characters yeah wow. i mean it's great i love it you know so advice just be professional work hard and get don't be a there dick. on time <laughs> hey. don't, don't be a dick. don't be a dick that's yeah. basically the advice i give you be on time be professional do your research learn try and learn a craft like don't like nobody falls into acting in that way you can fall into it but then you should really learn craft you know mm. uh train your body to be malleable it doesn't have to be perfect shape it doesn't have to be like amazing but it should be malleable and 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 useful get a useful body if you want to do mocap learn skill sets like weapon work gun work uh, military tactics uh climbing yoga like all this kind of stuff right yep if you want to do more performance capture work then cool learn to develop your voice make sure you have a Vocal warm-ups, make sure you can do a range of accents, make sure you understand creature um, work for mocap and character study for performance capture. I mean, everything to do with acting and a little bit of stunts and action, learn it all if that's what you want to do. And know that it is not, I'm a rarity, I'm touch wood, I probably say this, I'll be out of work forever, <laughs> but I'm a rarity in the industry. There's not many of us that make our living predominantly in voiceover. I was going to say that, yeah. You are like an yeah, anomaly not, there. Yeah. There's a few of us out there, so I'm not the only person. But not but, yeah, many, not really. many of us. Not many of us, not nah. really, no. Yeah. Nah, not very, and again, very, very, very lucky, very grateful, and very blessed to be able to say that. But also, it didn't fall into your lap. You've worked hard, as we all know. Yeah, I worked my ass off. I can definitely say <laughs> I worked my ass off for this. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, mate, you. it's been an absolute pleasure. Guys, if you want it's to follow great. Neil, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, you can also get a cameo from Heisenberg yeah, or so, any yeah, other character. That. Yeah, sure. Um, a few. <laughs> I think it's Neil New Newborn on everything, pretty much. You yeah, I was lucky down. that nobody nobody had a... I have a TikTok account that I will never use because I do not understand TikTok. <laughs> TikTok is where I stop and go, <laughs> just explain it to me one more time. What? <laughs> I've, got, I've so, got one. I never use it. And I checked it the other day and I got 20,000 followers. I didn't do right. anything. It's just, just waiting for you to do that one thing. It's like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. I don't really get... I mean, I get many things in life, but TikTok is... TikTok is just a trip too far, I think, for me at the moment. Maybe, who knows? I'll have a midlife crisis and go TikTok. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> never say never, man. Never say never, you know? Well, I hope you enjoyed yourself, brother. It's been great. Thank you so much for letting me talk <laughs> a lot, <laughs> which I do. It's been really nice to meet you, and thank you very much you for too, asking man. questions. If you're um, ever in a you know, down under, we need a beer. I actually have one of my one of my really close old school friends I'm still in touch with uh, is lives in I think he's moved from Sydney up north now into Byron I think or something near the Golden hey. Coast. So yeah, you never know, man. My cousins live in New Zealand anyway, so I'll definitely be around that. Oh, nice. At some point. Yeah, yeah. So you never Sorry, know. I cut you what, off before. You what were you saying? Huh? I cut you off before. What were you saying? I have no memory. I don't, oh, know. Okay. I don't know what it was about. Squirrel. I don't know. I'm sure what I was talking about. Um, but I got a buddy in, in Sydney, I think it is. So yeah, I'll definitely come around. Definitely come and see you, man. Oh, Whereabouts so nice. are you anyway? I'm in Melbourne. I know. Yeah, Melbourne, I like Australia. Melbourne. Sophisticated, very sophisticated. City. <laughs> yeah. But I was born born in Sydney. But um, mm. yeah, in Melbourne, I'm always in Sydney though. Every other day, but um, before pandemic, great. mate. Look again. I tell you what, it's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I did. I had a lot of fun. Thank you very much, Darren, for asking me on the first place. And thank you for everybody in the RE community for like welcoming me into their like, you know, bloody like bosoms and all that kind of stuff and all the blood and guts flying around. And I'm really glad that everybody liked my work. I really appreciate that and supportive of, of our endeavor in RE. Um, and yeah, just thanks for, for welcoming all of the actors, myself included, into the family. It's been really fun. Uh, it's also great that like the, the entire cast are very genuine and nice people. Yeah, you know, they really are. Aaron, they Chris, really are. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, in fact, well, many of us still speak to each other like out of work. Like we still, I mean, definitely myself and you know, Stephen Ebley and Jeff and Nicole, we are a mocap family. It's our mocap family. And um, we have new, cap, new members of the mocap family now as well. But we, we've been friends ever since that first game. And we speak to each other every month. I speak to Nicole and Jeff and Steve every month, yeah, at least. Now, are you you're do, are you doing a live signing? I heard you, you were doing a live yes, signing. Yes, I am. Feel I'm free to do, do it on signing. here if you need. If you need a platform, <laughs> I, I might well do. I'm, I'm not sure how to go about it, but we're going to sort it out. But um, Maggie Robinson and I are going to do a live signing, a duo signing. 
Nice. We think it's the Saturday the 29th. I think it is what we decided. Nice. I think, but we haven't gone live with our socials yet. But that will be a live signing. You can get a duo print for myself and Maggie and also our single prints as well. Mag, go get Maggie's. I'm just there for the ride. It's fine. But Mag, like Maggie's. I hope amazing. your arm's so, ready, mate. Yeah. You're going to be doing I'm, a lot I'm, of stuff. That's exactly what I said to Maggie. <laughs> you guys better be ready. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Yeah. But she deserves it. I mean, she is she is a truly a great, great young, and she's young, man. She's like fresh out the box, pretty much. She's done a few jobs, but not that much. So it's amazing, it's amazing. Same thing with Nicole Tompkins. Nicole, Nicole wasn't new. She'd done quite a lot of work beforehand. But to see Nicole, to see Brian, to see this is what I'm talking about. I've been around for a while. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, I saw yeah, yeah. Brian like shoot up some Nicole. She's up. It's going to happen to Maggie now as well. I hope. So it's really, really heartening to see like fellow actors just go stratospheric and i like being the sort of you know i like being the the supporting dude that's always sort of multi-role and yeah yeah. just being mischievous do you know what i mean the background so it's kind of nice to see people do that it's cool uh (laughs) dry he says neil you're welcome in the re community you're just amazing you're amazing love your voice great job neil great voice amazing actor amazing skills I mean, it just goes on, like I said before, mate. So thank you, really appreciate that. Thank um, you and uh, look, I have, before you go, I do have to ask one favor. I need, I need, yeah, I'm going to ask you: Can Heisenberg say something to Dan to round this off? Yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, um, <clears throat> like part of the family. Yeah, okay, yeah, go ahead. Go for it. Oh, do you? What do you? Do you want me to say? Oh no, whatever you want, but okay, whatever sure. comes to the top right. of your head. Look, Ethan, you got it all wrong. Dan Allen Gaming is the best fucking show on the planet. You just, you just got to come with me on this thing. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to chop your balls off, right? How's that? <laughs> I can do it more succinct if you like. Oh, man. That's amazing. Thank you, brother. Let's find out if Dan Allen Gaming really is the best fucking show in town. Have a nice <laughs> oh mate well look it's been a pleasure i'll definitely have you back at some point if you yeah, if you'll do. come back yeah. Um, yeah of course yeah whenever you want man just ask that's great and i'll be i'll be popping into your stream whenever you stream next thanks very much thank you yeah it's just again it's just neil newborn and i think we're doing like a role play game on sunday which isn't everybody's cup of tea so don't worry about that um but that's on sunday and then tuesdays and thursdays fridays i usually like do pop in and out as well but yeah you're most welcome thanks a lot dan cheers mate Cheers, mate. Look, I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day, mate. You're on. Take it easy. See you, folks. Thank you. Bye. And there you have it, guys. The man himself, Neil Newborn. An amazing actor, amazing guy, and great insights. Guys, I am reading the chat. I see a few people saying it's very hard to give the... Yeah, the guest attention and rechat and do everything so bear with me guys but i really appreciate the questions and the love in the chat as always i want to thank everyone who sent in a super chat i really appreciate you and your support of the channel lady demetrescu can you say lady size ugly dublin freak line <laughs> oh man thank you for the dono Neil is amazing in BG3. Just saying, Tammy, I know. Guy's amazing. Mia, what's up? Angela, DN, Jeremy, Leonardo, Kisma. Kisma, good to see you in here. Julie, Yami, Natrek. Amazing interview, damn Kimmy Galaxy. Uh, guys, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I hope hope it uh, was a lot of fun I tell you what I had a blast Dan L is indeed the best show Heisen he said it himself guys he said it himself hey thank you Neil and Dan that was cool as fuck thank you Sly appreciate it Neil is awesome he's amazing oh Curry it's been my pleasure to bring you guys the RE content now people have been asking can you do the heisenberg the different language i did forget to ask him i wanted to ask him about the different versions but i will get that out the japanese the spanish all the different versions of heisenberg that'll be the next video i do guys amazing interviews thank you 
AC Lee. Leah. Talon, thank you. Will you be doing more of these interviews, guys? Have you not seen? I got plenty lined up. Here's, here's the guest we've got coming on, guys. We've got... Hold on, one second. I've got to remember myself. Uh, let me get up. So we've got... Um, we have Mia Winters coming on the show. Katie O'Hagan, she'll be coming on the show. That is confirmed. Mia Winters. I've been talking to Todd Solely. He's a bit iffy if he's going to come on at the moment. So we need to give him that push. If you want to see him on, harass him. Don't harass him, but send him a message on Twitter, Instagram, if you can find him. We've also got Michelle Lukes, who plays Mother Miranda. She'll be coming on the show. Jesse Pimmelton, who plays Salvatore Moreau. He'll be coming on the show. Paula Rhodes, who plays Angie Eveline. She'll be on the show, Paula Rhodes. Nicole Thompson will be on the show. Daniela Demetrescu. Becca Bruett will be on the show. Pruitt. Bella Demetrescu. We've had the Duke. And there's a couple missing there. Are they coming on? Hmm. You'll have to wait and see. Amazing, man. Adrian, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, it was Rafaela Jones. It was so fun. I mean, that we've been live for, what, two hours? And it just flew by. Guys, guys are genius. Kimmy, thank you for your hard work on the videos. It's my pleasure. It's, it's, it's absolutely my pleasure. The Hunter, good to see you in here, man. Zebra... Love you too. Yeah, Mother Miranda. Rosemary Winters. Oh, I haven't thought of that one. Don't leave us hanging. <laughs> You've got to leave something something hanging. Don't I? No offense, Dan. I've never heard of you, Dan. How are you getting these famous people? <laughs> uh, if I had a nickel for every time I heard that. Do you pay these guests, Dan? How do you get them on? Do you know how I got Neil on? Send him an Instagram DM. That was it. First interview I've been able to make live, Lord Finchie. That's great to see you here, man. Heisenberg calling Chris a boulder-punching asshole won my heart. Yeah, he actually said that early in the interview, and. If you go back on this is gonna be a VOD, this is this this live will you'll be able to rewatch this live if you're coming in late guys or you miss some of it. I'll put timestamps in the whole interview so you can go to a specific question you want answered. I'll do all that for you guys straight after this. Hey okay, hey, I managed to catch one of them live. Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt, hey. I know that name. Are you the fiend? Only you and bro you and me might know that that reference. I could listen to Neil talk for hours and hours. I could too. It's it's amazing. I'm gonna get him back on. There's no doubt. He's working on five projects, and all, they're all probably big games. So we're we're, we're getting him back on for sure. Great interview, Dan Tanner. Thank you. I appreciate it. The Lady D mods. Oh, there's plenty. I mean, you guys saw the. The spanking videos and all that crap. It's just, it, it's gone viral. It really has. It's crazy. Does Neil have an English accent in real life? Yeah, yeah. Angela, thank you. Notifications definitely on. Not missing any of your streams. D and Y, you sir, are a legend. Absolute legend, guys. And I want to shout out a new a new member of the channel who came in. That was Nash Nash Sanadiki. You are the best of the best. Thank you for becoming a member of the channel. Really appreciate it.
Are you getting the person who played Moreau? I am. I am getting the pl the guy who played Moreau. Jesse. He was also in Resident Evil 7. He played Lucas, I believe. Which is pretty cool. So we'll talk to him about that as well. A, a lot of these... Uh, because we've got Natal Nicole Tompkins, who's coming on the show. Daniela Demetresk. But she was also... Who? She was Jill Valentine in Resi 3 Remake. Would you believe that? So that's that's pretty cool as well. Yeah, I'd love to get some devs on uh, of the game. That'd be cool. Get some behind the scenes of how the game was made. I think people would like that. Ivan, thank you for joining. I appreciate it. The guy who plays Ethan would be cool. I'm, I'm working on it, guys. He's He hasn't done any interviews, so this would be his first. Uh, this would be his first. He did Lucas, Ollie. Yeah. Moreau is Lucas from Resi 7. Isn't it crazy? Does the giant baby have an actor? <laughs> I know. I, I'm going to look that up. I also want to experiment. I want to see if the baby has a different interpretation in different languages. No one's done it. I'm going to test that out as well. I think that'll be cool. Uh, yeah, pretty much got the whole gang. The only ones that aren't officially announced are Chris... Redfield, aka Jeff Shine, and Maggie Robertson, aka Lady D. But you know, just look out, just look out for it. Dan, are you planning on playing Rift Apart when it comes out in June? I am Tanner, and I'd like to get some of the voices behind Ratchet and Clank on as well. You're talking Jennifer Hale. I'm in talks with her to get something happening there. I'm, uh, who, who's the Ratchet voice actor? Forgive me, I forgot his name, but yeah, I probably will cover Ratchet and Clank for sure. The stream has 19 dislikes, mind blowing. I know. There's always a dislike. I like to think in the back of my head they just accidentally clicked it. <laughs> no, I haven't got Maggie yet. No, it's not confirmed. We haven't done it yet, but stay tuned, Jeremy. This is honestly insane. These voice actors have such incredible range. I'll, I agree, Ollie. Santi, baby! Welcome to the best of the best, Santi! Santi, guys, is one of the greatest Warzone players in the history of the game. Friend of mine, Santi, Santi, Santi. Love you, brother. Uh, I didn't get you the win, though, did I? Did you get a win last night? Interview with Mia Winters, that is happening. Leroy, that is happening. Maybe the giant baby is Dan himself. Yummy. <laughs> oh, shit. Dada. Yummy. Justin, Dan, you're a really awesome person. Love all your interviews. You're the best. Justin, you're the best. And I mean that. Thank you. Get Amy Henning. That'd be cool. What about Donna Benevolento? Beneviento. Uh, I, I mean, I could, but it, it, she had one line. I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess I could. If you guys want that, do you want me to do that? I, I can, I can make it happen. You tell me. Did you do an uh, with Leon, the actor for Leon Resi Two? I will probably do that. Just yeah, I probably will reach out to him. I think that'd be cool. Neil has the smoothest voice in the world. I know. One interview at a time. You're doing a great job. Kisma, thanks again for dropping by. Leroy, interview with Angie the Doll. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, Paula Rhodes, that's confirmed. It would be a legendary interview with Ethan Winners. Yeah, it would be a first, wouldn't it? I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. The music right now that you're hearing is the uh, save room. Can you hear that very well or what? I don't know. You can hear it. It's a bit of the save room from Resi 8. Dan Winter. Jennifer Hale is the Lombrax in Ratchet and Clank. James Arnold Taylor and Clank for Clank and David Cole. Yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Interview with the Duke. Check my channel, Beamy. It's already happened, man. It's already happened. When is the next interview? Because I'm heading to bed. I really want to ask something about the portrait on this Demetrius sisters. 
Uh, just check my channel, man. Go to the, the playlist, Dan Allen interviews or live streams. And you'll be able to see when they're scheduled for. And you can click set to reminder to remind you. Just click it on all of them for me. In the scene of interviews, games, you are unmatched. Direct. That means a lot. Thank you. It really does. Thank you so much. Hey, Alan. Do you contact the voice actors such as Arthur Morgan? Evan, I've already done Arthur Morgan, brother. I've already done him. Roger Clark. We had him on. Just type in Roger Clark Dan Allen. You'll find that. Would you interview Adam Jensen, Deus Ex? I'd love to. All the actors at the same time. That's a good one, book. Hey, that's a really good one. Yeah, maybe I should do that, eh? An interview with Ethan's hand because it's always in the spotlight. <laughs> Ray D, you're funny. Very, very funny. You'd have to hide his face to remain faithful to the game if you interview. Ah, oh, that's an interesting one. Maybe I'll ask him that. Maybe that'll push him over the line. I don't know. All right, guys, it's uh, 10 a.m. here. I need some brekkie in my belly. Look, it's been an absolute pleasure, guys. I thank you for tuning in again. If you're not already, subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video. We've got 2,600 likes. Let's get that to 3,000. And, uh, yeah, guys, look, plenty more Resident Evil Village content to come. I hope you'll enjoy it, watch it, love it. Guys, thank you so much. Take care.